All right, guys, sorry for disappearing on you. And if you weren't here for the first round, then uh, I never did. But uh... <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Hopefully the Wi-Fi is better this time, but who knows? Yeah, I'm back. Thanks, Jay Roy. Hope you're having a great day too. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, so hopefully connection's better this time. Hopefully. Let's see how we get on. G'day, Johnny. Good evening from Ireland. Welcome. You caught me just the right time. We're on the uh, finishing touches of this ball painting. Almost there. You love watching me paint even though you're colorblind. Well, that's pretty fun. Well, it's tough, but uh, limitation can sometimes bring with it creativity. Beethoven was death in the later part of his life, so that's awesome. Good morning from Auckland. Yeah, good morning. Welcome. Look at that. It's better. Thanks, Justin. I did my best. <laughs> Took some work. I like music. Of course I like music. Everyone likes music. We just all like different genres. I'm a big fan of, uh, honestly, I like myself some country music. I think there's nothing wrong with it. Rock climbing was fun. It was actually, uh, it was actually bouldering, which was uh, new for me. So there was no harnesses or anything. You just climb up the wall and then you uh, fall off if you can't hang on. And you never go too high. You sort of keep it within kilter. Very fun though. Very fun, so it's cool bouldering. And I work with some very good friends. And that makes any activity fun. Good friends. Ooh, do I like music when I paint? Yes, I do. But um, I haven't figured that out on TikTok Live yet because of, I don't want to get copyright infringements. So if someone can tell me to go, I'd love to know to go. Someone here loves Taylor Swift. You know what, if I could play Taylor Swift, I would. Well, would I? Probably. Um, I hope you're well. G'day, Kate. I am well. And evening here, Tina. All right. All right. All very good. What's your opinion on AI generated paintings? Look, art is art and anyone can have a go whatever they like. Um, but if the world is changing and you find new art forms like that appearing, you may find that what you do may struggle hugely in light of a new developed technology like Kodak cameras when uh, 
Canon digital cameras. Digital camera. That. When digital cameras became popular, Kodak cameras that needed to like produce their footage became really unpopular. Well, less popular. So, with AI generated artwork, they could create a challenge for anyone producing art. For consumers in a similar vein, or people who would appreciate that artwork in a similar vein. So, what do I reckon? I reckon it's happening all the time. Um, one big one was photography. That effect that photography had on painting, because painting was out there trying to produce realism. And then photography comes along and says, I can do it better. Um, to an ex you know, in its own way, but uh, I can do it better. And so from there, painting had to find its wealth its own little niche or its own part where it does a spectacular job which was no longer realism because the camera took that um, so that's what I think about those sort of paintings which is wholesome so that's fun hey Dre thanks for the roses you're fantastic Hence, cubism and abstract art. Um, to a large degree. Um, one other way. Uh, so yeah, getting expressive and not trying to produce realism and firing off in another direction. It's definitely one of those methods. Uh, the other thing that I've seen a lot of is art that is better viewed in person because it's got a lot of texture or um, the way the light hits it and things is different. So that's something important, especially when you've got not just photography now, but you've got NFTs, which are digital art. And so you'd have to ask yourself, why would I want to own a, digital, a real piece of art if I could just own the NFT? Because that sounds far more convenient and you'd be right. So how do you make art valuable in the face of NFTs running around? And probably creating attributes to the physical piece of artwork that a digital reproduction can't have is a fantastic way to start. Um, Johnny, I do not know this bull rider. Um, he is a very famous one though. His name is Lane Frost. Um, he passed away writing. Um, and he's part of the reason why most cowboys after his death wear vests because he didn't wear a vest that's what got him um, how do you get colours to dance like that how do I get the colours to dance like that it's a it's just part of my style <laughs> um Love colours. Love colours. Hey, out of Amsterdam. Welcome. What is 7,873 7, miles? That's more than the Proclaimers was willing to walk. Far, far more. Of course, it wouldn't really fit with the song if that's how far he was planning on walking. Maybe he was in the recording studio and he was saying, I've written a song. It's called I Would Walk 7,873 Miles and I Would Walk 7,873 More. The producer's just looking at him and he's like, mm, I like it. I like the song. How do you feel about walking 500 miles? He's like, it doesn't have the same ring to it. Like, it's not as far as I want to walk. He's like, yep, yep, no, I get that. But I think 500 is more appropriate. And there you go. You have paint on your finger. I do have paint on my finger. I've made a mess. But here we are. 
Hopefully I don't get paint on my shirt. Hi from New Zealand. Thank you very much. And Aztec, thank you for the hanging lights. Much appreciated. What's base of your painting? Uh, well, the base would be gesso on a canvas or board. And then once the gesso is down, then we'll be talking about the... Oils and acrylics. That's how I form a base. So that's wholesome. Good evening from Holland. Welcome. You're the first person, maybe not the first person who's been on from Holland, but the first person who said that I've also seen is from Holland. So that's wholesome. That's very wholesome. Morena, Morena J, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Chloe. If you don't know where we are, this is Auckland. I was on the live earlier, but I. Ba -ba 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 -ba. couldn't get the good connection. And so Justin sent me some pictures of it and he was like, yo, this is what we're seeing. And I'm like, Justin, that's a disaster. Let me fix that. And so I think we fixed that. Did we fix that? Possibly we fixed that. Thanks, Justin. Um, will this painting consume lots of tubes of paint? probably got a full tube on it not more than that though it's not the thickest paint job it's just a little bit but today I am going to print up some new pictures and I do have a portrait to do so it's a portrait of a gentleman and it's going to be very fun very fun famous last words looking forward to it though love your artwork thank you very much Pronunciation, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. So it's the V V V V V New Zealand accent, but New Zealand accents sound a lot like Australian accents and vice versa to the rest of the world. I mean, to a lot of Kiwis and Australians too, actually. Yes, it's fixed. All good now, Justin. You champion. You saved the day. And Sherry Brown, you live in Auckland. It's too busy in Auckland now. You've moved to the country. Good for you. I've just moved to Auckland. And it is sort of busy. So you're right. Morning from Australia on my way to work. You better not be driving. Naughty. Well, unless you're on, on the hands free. Maybe you're on a bus. Maybe you're in an Uber all the options that you could be doing to make it okay to be heading to work and simultaneously watching this live. I'm sure you're a safe person, however you're doing it. How many days to finish today? We're gonna to finish it today. Um, I'm getting too caught up on little bits of detail and I don't want a whole lot of detail on this piece. I want sound like a spoiled kid. I want, I want, I want. I want to get the uh, energy captured. Not in a weird way. Not, not in a spiritual energy way. In a, uh, I want to capture the vigor of the subject matter. And then once that's caught, um, I want to stop. Because after I've caught the vigor of the subject matter, I want the paint to be as free and as wild as possible. So that's what's going on here. That's what's going on. Hey, Seb, I hope your day's going well. I hope your day is going well too. 
So I wish you all the very best. And I'm sure there's a lot of amazing things that you're going to achieve with your day. Why? Because you deserve to achieve amazing things with your day. I don't know who you are. I'm just a random little Kiwi inside a small box on your phone. But this random little Kiwi inside a small box on your phone believes in you. So go have a great day. Um, thank you so much. Appreciate the... Uh, I don't think I got a butterfly, I think I got something else, but a butterfly gave me something else. I appreciate you. Is it difficult to know when you're done? I mean, you could apply that to anything. Very difficult to know when you're done. The dark, you mix the color, it's not just black. No, use uh, dark blue most of the time. Dark blue is easy. Good to see you again, good to see you too. You're all amazing, and thank you so much for cake. Um, I am on a low, I'm eating less carbs at the moment, so the cake isn't the best thing for me, but uh, I will appreciate it. And since you give it to me, I will enjoy the cake all the same. Absolutely. Morg's number one gifter. You're the best. Lewis, it is a mixture. We're currently using acrylics, but we, we, I'm currently using acrylics, but a lot of it is oil. So it's a mixture. Do I have Snapchat? I do have Snapchat, don't have Snapchat. I don't, I think more, more appropriately, I don't use Snapchat. That's probably the way I put it. That, but it reads in the wrong place. So, I used to use it, very fun. Today, no, Oh, that's very helpful. Um, you always use similar color. Do you always use similar colors when you're doing your thing? Um, yes, I do. Hold on. Uh, I do like sports. Hold on. I don't know what my Snapchat handle is. I haven't used the app in so long. So long, so long. Um, but I've got Instagram and that's in the bio. Uh, I, <laughs> Kate, I was about to answer that seriously. Don't trick me like that. <laughs> um, I do have TikTok. Wild. Yes, I do. I was about to give that a genuine answer. And I was going to look silly. I do look silly. So here we are. Why are you painting a white shirt? Because I didn't have a grey one. Um, no, I... Uh, because I don't plan on getting any on me. Um, I actually got a little bit on it. So I seem silly anyway. Uh, so I painted a white shirt because I think that if you dress smart, you paint a little smarter. So, just like going for a job interview or going to a, uh, out for dinner or on a date, dress to look the part and you'll do a slightly better job. Maybe, possibly, you'll feel like you could. Thanks for sharing the live, guys. You're all the best. You are the best. Um, and thanks for the follow, you bunch. It's lovely. So I've been trying to go live more and more because it's fun. And later on, not today, but tomorrow probably, I wanna go back to, if you were here at the very start, you'll remember the girl with the horse. And we're gonna keep going on that one. Painting an apron. Thank you for the suggestion. Lobbed, but new. New, I like to wear this. And the best thing about life and painting and anything you do is you get to do you. So sometimes I'll wear an apron, but I can also choose not to wear an apron and do it my way. So that's why we're here. I'm gonna tuck that in a little bit, there we go. Got a little bit of skin showing there. It'll be gone now, there we go. Problem solved. I hear some sarcasm, Roy. No, you don't. It's New Zealand accent, it's tripping you up there a little bit. There's no sarcasm, I wouldn't dare. 
Are you an Aussie? I'm not an Aussie. You are looking at a Kiwi. Kiwi. But, for all intents and purposes, may as well be an Aussie for the rest of the world. Small populations, close to proximity. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. My favourite thing to paint. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. old people's faces. Um, there's a lot to be captured in the wrinkles. There's a lot going on. If you're a senior and you're thinking, I would like a portrait of myself, realize that that is my bread and butter and I would be thrilled to do that for you. Um, there's a lot of character and energy and vigor and fun uh, to painting the wrinkles and contours of someone's uh, face. And like kids' faces are fantastic, great, but actually they don't have the same depth and uh, time and weathering that a senior's face has. And you're like, well, why would you want that? Well, that's much more fun to paint. Much more fun. So that's where I'm at. Adrian, thank you for sharing the live and anyone else who shared it, but uh, that's just the one I saw. So you're the best. Um, at Seb Gower, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Seb Gower. Why'd you take me in my life? I appreciate it. Um, hopefully I didn't miss something. Hi. What kind of art is this? Uh, fine art. <laughs> it's um, just, uh, what would you call it? Impressionism. Expressionism. Painting. Impasto. All the things. Um, Yeah, there's a bunch of different labels you could put on it, but uh, at the face, at, at the sort of core level, this is just my style. I like using paint. I like adding it thick. I like making the subject come together while also letting the paint be wild. I think that's the marriage that you want with art, that you want the arts medium to take up half the art and the uh, subject matter to take the other half and to marry in the middle. New people, one rose, you're the best. I appreciate my little rose and sent some speakers. You're the best. I appreciate my speakers. This is acrylic and it was oils, but now we're doing acrylics. This is my messy little paint tray. Voila. So like I was saying the other day is I'm going to start moving into these more earthy colors hot oranges hot reds well that's not earthy but hot colors to try and capture that westerny feel um see where that takes us see where that takes us marry you i think we should get to know each other first i think that's a much better way to do it of course we can't at the moment um unfortunately because i'm with an amazing girl already but I'm sure you're a great person and you will find Mr. or Mrs. Wright because you deserve it. And uh, wherever you end up, just know that I'm backing you. You're the best. Thanks for tennis balls and lollipops, Morgs. You're the bomb. That's fantastic. Go play tennis together. I'm pretty bad at it, tennis actually. Rally to serve. Problem is, I can't serve. Blue hearts, they look lovely. What are you doing? Double checked up. Uh, so I was on earlier this morning and I couldn't get the internet to work. So Justin helped me out and we got it going and now we're here with it going. So that's fun, that's fantastic. I am in Auckland, rock climbing was good, was very good. I'd do it again, um, I will do it again. Very wholesome. Um, so, our other friend, his name was Matt, he was actually very, very good at it. So, it was handy, because he was able to say, all right, tried this wall now, tried that wall, and that was really good, because otherwise I'd probably just keep trying walls and failing. But uh, with him, he like, 
made us feel like we were achieving things. Because, uh, he, 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 he. Made us feel like we were achieving things because he picked out the right walls to slowly build us up. You know how to cook. That is fantastic. Why are you painting at 8, 19 a.m.? Well, because that's the current time on the clocks. If it was, if the clock said 12.15, then that would be the time I'd be painting. But right now, they say 8.20. So there we go. What's my nickname? It's Seb. Short for Sebastian. So that is my name. It's my name. Yeah, so very fun. Bouldering gets a recommend. Sorry, I missed a few. I'm, I'm missing things there. Boulder is lots of fun. Nice experience. For me, the picture is finished, but you're an artist. Yeah, so... Mm. Mm. We're very close. We're definitely very close. And I was saying uh, at the start of the stream before it got cut out that this is the final layer. This is the final layer. Um, oh my God, you love, oh, that's fun. Um, good painting, white shirt, I'll paint all over you. Maybe, maybe. Or try it in a white shirt and you might be like, huh, oh, it's actually really easy. He tricked us all by making us think he was doing something really epic, when actually it was very, very simple. Um, so, if you can, if you can keep your paints clean, that's always a fun way to do it. Um, for a bit of detail here, we're gonna get a smaller brush, point. Thank you for my mic, Morgs. Unless you're saying, please speak louder. Because I deserve that too. Makes sense. A lot of jobs start at 7.30 a.m. Yeah, oh, that's what I was saying before. Yeah, so I think you're allowed to paint whenever you like. Um, a lot of artists do it late at night. Good for them. Um, I find if I do it late at night, I go too late. And then I don't get tomorrow morning. So, I try and paint, if I can, in the morning where there aren't any distractions, get the job done, and then, or get your creativity out, and then you've got the whole day to attack other things. Um, the stereotype of the artist smashing out art late at night, emotionally in front of a canvas, and um, doing that is still a thing, but, you know, morning after a coffee, Pretty special. You're not hungry. You you know you you wake up first thing and you just have a coffee and start painting. Um, are you as sharp as you could be? Probably not. But uh, that's a great time. It's a great time. Um, lighting can be tough sometimes. So as we get more time, the lights can come through that window. But that's still fine. Like it's all good. Lol, usually they said you're more creative at night. Well, who's they? Because you've got a random Kiwi with not much credentials telling you that the morning's great. <laughs> um, no, nah, whatever suits you. Um, the worst thing you could do as an artist is l listen to everyone else if it goes against what you think you should be doing. Because if you prefer the morning, the evening, whatever, uh, the worst thing you could do is take my advice and change what's working for you. So, what am I trying to say? Take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, and you do you. Because no one knows you better than you. Unless someone does know you better than you. In which case, listen to what they say, because they know what you should do. But, uh, you know you. G giggling manically? Maniacally, maniacally, maniacally. Um, yes, I do have a loud giggle. I would make a great supervillain. Cackling up on a stage. But I'd like to believe that if this was a world with villains and heroes, to imagine Austin Powers style, 
I'd like to believe that I was on Austin Powers' team. Me and Austin Powers working together. He can be dressed in like that thing with a fluffy front and I'll be like in a tux and we'll be the dream team. Doesn't even need to be Austin Powers actually. I'll just hang out with Mike Myers. That'll be fun. Me and Mike, living the dream. Doing big things. No, I'm giggling. You're giggling. Ooh, you're giggling. All right, well. Probably at me, because I haven't seen anything that'd be remotely funny enough to warrant a giggle just yet. So, that's where we're at. Um, are you a world-renowned painter? Am I a world-renowned painter? I mean, um, no. Um, I don't think so. Maybe. Maybe. What distinguishes world renown? I think, yeah, there's levels to this stuff. If by world renown painter you mean top level, I am not top level. Um, but, uh, yeah. I'm at the level I'd like to be at. <laughs> so that's wholesome. Um, I don't understand what the text is. Um, kiwi is a race of people. It is. And it's also a type of fruit. A kiwi fruit. And it's also a type of bird. Kiwi bird. And they're all correct. And we're lucky to be connected with each and every one of them. Good for us. If you don't know where New Zealand is, go to Australia, and then go a little bit more south, and a little bit more east, and you'll make it. You'll be okay. You guided it in a kayak. It's that close. Wild. Um, so that's fun. So we've got, I'm not sure. Dun 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 I'm not sure if Lucas is saying polite things or rude things. But it's all in capitals. So it's very hard to tell. So we're on Makona. Medium roast five classic. It's sick. Ooh. Should I take it to the dock? No, I'm having you on. Uh, so it's thank you very much. Appreciate the compliment. It's um yeah, it's coming together. It's pretty fun. I think uh, to finish it off, this one's gonna get a coat of liquid glass over the top. Um to finish it off. So I'll take it back to the ridge studio, the Corona studio for that. Everyone knows New Zealand from our sports stars, actors and beaches. Um, well, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. Australian painter, 29 years old, uh, Kiwi. Now let me just grab some more hot water out of the jug to put in this and I'll be right back. people out there are like, oh, Ross never walked off and left us just looking at the painting. He finished, he started the work and he finished it. I'm like, yeah, it's fair enough. It's fair enough. Do you sell your art? Three. I do. So I'm based in New Zealand and the artwork is available. The finished pieces, what's currently available should be on my website, which is in my bio. Um, and you'll also find options to order commissions because um, maybe the pieces on there don't fully resonate with you. Uh, so you've got that option. 
and um, yeah. And you can come and pick the artwork up, or I can send it to you, or you can order the artist, me, direct to your doorstep, and I can paint it on site, which is the cheapest for shipping, so that's fun too. Um, yeah. No, I didn't just lick my paintbrush. That would be silly. I'm not going to do that. Um, but it's something you should not eat the paint. This is a water-based paint, so if you were going to eat paint, this is the paint to eat. But don't eat the paint. The last thing I need is to hear someone say, ah, oh, you were talking about recommending eating paint on your channel. And now there's a bunch of people who are now eating paint, and you're to blame. I'd be like, well, I don't think that's entirely fair. Is your brush's horse here? I thought you were asking me if I brushed horse here with broken English, but uh, you're not. You've got perfect English. Um, so, these brushes are not horse hair. They are. Synthetic long handle DAS. Um, I'm not sure about this brush. The other brushes are pig bristles. Um, I like horse hair brushes though. They're wholesome. I could paint. Good for you. Proud of you. Go do it. Live the dream. Um, Shade of Venom. You're very curious about that. I'm straight and I've got a lovely partner who is currently, what time is it? 8.30? Uh, probably getting ready for work, I reckon. Or she's just laying there doing not a lot, watching live, laughing at your comment. Um, how long does it take me to finish this? Look, this has got another... It is hard to tell, maybe two hours, three hours, I reckon. Depends how much yabbering I do. You know, we'll see. We'll see. But we're making good ground. Though the big thing about painting, if you've been on this channel before, you'll be like, he said that before. And I did, I did say that before. Is that uh, development of a painting is not linear. Sometimes it'll go in the right direction and sometimes it'll go in the very, very wrong direction. And you need to be prepared for that. And roll with your punches. You're a lovely partner. Good for you. Live that dream. Um, good for you. Good for you. Go do it on live. You <laughs> Thanks, too. I appreciate you. Um, thank you so much, Cheryl. Sorry, I'll get this. I'll put it. I'll put it down now. I know. I know. I'm just trying to talk while there's a brush in my mouth, but I wanted to get this color changed over in here because that's not correct. That's got to cut back there, and then that horn is in the wrong place. That's got to cut down through there. Is that horn in the right place? It's sort of in the right place. I think it's in the right place. Someone's watching the live, are you going, no, you're definitely off. <laughs> um, as an artist myself, uh, tolavi, patience indeed. A lot of patience indeed. I think a lot of, a lot of e, patience indeed. Um, depends, depends on the artwork. This one here, I want to get more detail in. Um, it's not my usual style, but we're here doing it. Um, just because the person who wanted this one I believe wants more definition so that's what we're up to fixing time manifesting if you will good on you see there was a TV show about that called manifest I think manifest great word actually Manifest. I like the many part, but the fest part makes it sound like like festy, a bad smell. 
Like, I feel like if you manifested something, manifesting doesn't smell like lavender. They're like, it sounds like it's going to smell stale. Yeah. So I don't think, like, there's a reason why no colognes are called manifest. Maybe there is one. There shouldn't be. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a sexy word. It's just a good word. You haven't been painting since yesterday nonstop? I absolutely haven't. Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is coffee. Indeed. <laughs> An optimistic prime. Um, possibly. I think my voice is a bit too high. It just... It's deceptive. It sounds lower than it is. It's not that low. It just has a sort of like robot tone to it. Um, and that's a Kiwi thing. You haven't heard me say it before, you'll hear me say it now. Us Kiwis sound like robots. In the most wholesome of ways. Do I have Twitter? I don't have Twitter. Um, I don't know what I'd do with a Twitter. If I had a Twitter, I'd go on it in the morning. I'd wake up. And before I went live, whereas I was having my coffee, I'd write out an inspirational quote for you guys. A lot of them wouldn't make sense because I'd be so tired, but it would be like, hey, whatever you're planning on doing today, you go out there and smash it. Good luck in that big bad world, guys. And you'd be like, oh, that's wholesome. Um, but... Why would I do that when you can just get me here, right now, live, and I can tell you that to your face. Whatever you're doing today, guys, you go out there and smash it. I'm proud of you. Um, I'll print it and stick it on my wall. Uh, that's pretty cool. And Dave, I do sell the paintings. So, if you'd like a painting, you can go to my website in the bio. There's a bunch of artwork that's currently available, um, and... There is also the ability to order commissions via the website. If the commissions don't fit with what you're after personally, that's okay. You can reach out personally by the email, the phone number, or the uh, Instagram and get in touch with me because I would love to put art in your home or in your life in the way that you want it. That would be wholesome for me. That's not why I want my Twitter. Why else would you want my Twitter? I can give you such wholesome, inspirational quotes in the morning, but I feel like it's better that I say them verbally to you right now, because it sounds more authentic. You're welcome. Um, I think I'm getting there. Cody Simpson. I don't know who Cody Simpson is. Ooh, is he a bull rider? Cody Simpson. I was listening to a Cody on... Uh, I did uh, Spotify this morning. That was fun. Good morning, guys. If you're saying good morning, I assume you're joining me from Auckland. If you notice that, I almost spilt this down my front, which would have been hilarious, because this is my only shirt. So we would have continued to paint, covered in paint. Um, if you're joining from Auckland, welcome. I'm in Auckland too. If you're joining from New Zealand, that's cool. I'm in New Zealand as well. And if you're joining from the Southern Hemisphere, that's fantastic. Guess what? I'm there too. And if you're joining from somewhere on Earth, that's pretty cool. I'm also there. It's 3 a.m. there. Wild. 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Where? Where could you possibly be? It makes it 3 a.m. I don't know. 3 a.m. And you're on a TikTok live watching a random Kiwi painting American. Uh, Taylor's version, Sign of the Times. Oh no, that's tagged for another person. Sorry, just butted into your conversation, as you were. Kiops, I am having a great day. I hope you're having a great day. 
If you haven't started your day, I hope you do have a great day. So Daniel, I'm glad painting is relaxing to you. Sometimes it's all you need, a little relaxation to kick into your day. There we go, we're gonna fold those corners up properly. There we go. There we go. Cool, cool. Now we're gonna keep adding on to that background. This background is called in my name. I did tell someone the other day that I was going to come back with a green hue over the top of it. And I haven't gone back on that yet. I may still do it. Mike Kosky. Kosty, don't just laugh. I mean, he can if he wants to, I suppose. Can he? I don't know. It's a free world out there. Do whatever you like. Taylor's version, He's Distracted. Are these songs? Are these songs? I think I'm jumping at random parts of the conversation. I'm missing key parts. And that's just what's happening. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in the conversation. I'm like, I want to get this background in here. And I want to join the conversation. But I'm struggling to do both at once. I said so, I guess I get no extra curriculum. I had a week's detention. That's no good. Oh well. It's happened now. Good thing is you're out and free next week. Oh, I see what's happening now. Oh, she's got... Okay, so the brackets are Taylor's version. Okay, I thought we were talking about a version of Taylor's song. Which we sort of are. But I thought we were talking about the Taylor Swift song. This is what happens when you're me and you don't concentrate and you don't realise that it's actually someone's name. I thought someone was sending me cute hearts all the time for a while. And uh, turns out that was a username. So, don't be me. Silly. I'm a sunny surf life Gisbon. I'm from Sunny Surf Life Gisborne. Good for you. Most of her decision, most of her decision is like almost abstract. Yeah. You take on the painting and give it color is very nice. Thank you very much. So that's the, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, with the paint, if you heard me earlier, then I'm so sorry for repeating myself, but I'm gonna, is we're trying to have it put on really thick and to really feel like paint up close, but then at a distance to be able to make out the subject. And at about the halfway mark, we want it to sort of chop and change between being paint and being the subject. But we don't want either one to take prominence over the other. It wants to be a constant, non-stop version. We only listen to Taylor's version songs. Um, that's good. That's good. Um, they sound pretty similar. But I'm glad that you've got a preference. Preferences are good, guys. You stick to those. I um, wasn't talking to you, but hey, recognition is what it is. I'm sorry, Mika. Um, I've been butting into a few conversations. So, if I butt in... Yeah, I'm sorry. Sometimes I just start reading and then I realize it's just not meant for me. And I'm like, oh no. So I try and get out, but then I've already said it out loud. Can you, I mean, it's just acrylic paint. If you're not in New Zealand, by the time you get here, it's gonna to be too dry anyway. I'll just throw out the brush. But I appreciate the gesture. It's very nice of you.
Thank you so much. We are in Auckland. It shouldn't look like I was thinking about that. That was very stupid. But uh, yes, I'm in Auckland and I am currently, thank you for the weights, Michael, appreciate you. Um, painting in a small artist collective studio. Well, it's a big studio. I'm painting in a small space in that studio. Un momento. more layers in this background, we'll keep building that up. These are the right colours for it. These are very much the right colours for it. Now let's just go like this. Here we are. I knew I'd find it. Here we go. That leaves me more for tiny up. Here we go. Down you come. There we go. Up it goes. Can you still see that? Yeah, you can still see that, guys. We're golden. Um, so, 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 so. It's a little bit lower. Otherwise, I'm going to be stretching up all day trying to reach it. Here we go. Where is Oakland? Where is Oakland? You're asking the wrong guy. Oh, sorry. Auckland. Auckland. So Oakland is a place in Belgrade, Maine, I think. But uh, Auckland, Auckland is in the New Zealand, North Island, top of the North Island area. Thank you very much, guys. Um, so that's wholesome. Do I want your number? Well, it depends. Do you have a utility or a service? Because if you're a plumber, and I've got a broken pipe, then your number would be very handy. If you're a electronic store, and I would love to hear bones, useful number. If you're a friend, and you want a yak, then also useful to have. These are all reasons why someone would need your number. I reckon. Hey Seb, I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great weekend too. Wishing you all the best. What is your favorite painter artist? Nice paint by the way, thank you so much. Um, my favorite artist is Van Gogh. Van Gogh number one, Picasso number two. Um, I just love their styles, their lives, the art they make. It's all good by me. Big fan. Do you know any Māori? Of course I do, this is New Zealand. Um, my high school had a uh, marae. My, um, what is it like? Māori, we did Māori prayers before we cut wood. For wood cutting class. We studied Māori a lot in first year university at Massey. Māori artists, Māori history, all the things. All the things. Hi you, how is your day going? G'day Nicole, it's going good. Welcome back to the stream. Say welcome back. Yeah. Yeah. My weekend was hectic. First pipe, mini food, mini flood, and worst of all, I had to speak to my landlord. That sounds like a lot of things. I'm sorry you had to go through that. But don't worry, it's the start of the week now. And we've got more things to do. So, you're a plumber. Well, welcome. We have a plumber in our midst. I saw the video on your grandma, so sweet. Thank you very much. So, 
Grandma's not with me today. She's back in Tauranga. But she enjoyed herself. The whole not making it look real, but having more fun where the paint goes. She's still getting her mind around that a little bit because she likes she likes things to look proper. But uh, she's happy that I'm having fun, so that's positive. That's not there. That goes. We'll get rid of it. Pop. Pop, pop, and pop, pop, pop. That's good. I'm glad. Hey, gorgeous, can you paint my cow, Howard? Um, Howard seems like a lovely cow. I'd love to paint Howard. If you leave on my website and you'll find a link for commissions and we can paint Howard. I'm going to have a shower. Number. <laughs> Good for you. Have a great day. We'll miss you. Grandparent passed away when I was seven. I'm sorry to hear that. But, uh, mm. It's a real shame, but uh, it happens. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, Two Studs Ranch. How long have I been working on it? I've been working on this one, hmm, a couple of hours, four or five. And then we're coming around to our final. Our final one or two hours now. You see a mountain. That's good. That's good. Um, I don't think there's a mountain in this picture, but I'm glad you spotted one. Yep, I have a little bit of paint on myself. There is no lie in there. Um, I do need just a teeniest, tiniest bit of green. Tiniest bit. Do you do family portraits? I do do family portraits. Um, and they're pretty funky too because when I do family portraits there's an abstract element to them I'm sorry an abstract element an element of abstraction um, and what I mean by that is that with my family portraits you can tell that it's your family you can see their faces you can capture the sort of essence of what's going on but uh it's not one of those in-your-face style portraits, it's actually more subtle. And so you can put it up in the living room and it's not aggressive to visitors, whereas all your family members can see yourselves and see your family and your loved ones and things. So it's quite special in that sense. It's morning for you and it's school. All right, Pineapple says, I'm glad you're at school. Live that dream. Learn heaps. Become real smart. Get yourself a good career as long as that's the future that you want. Otherwise, do whatever you want, because that's the beauty of life. You can do whatever you like. Um, happy Tuesday 7, good morning. Thanks, Evelyn. You're the best. Welcome back. So yeah, same is about how much longer left? Yeah, one or two hours. It's become art class in English, so no one is going for the big bucks. It's become art class in English, so no one is going for the big bucks. I don't fully understand that, but I'm glad you seem happy, so that's positive. That's all we need.
Just let him paint. Ha! <laughs> Or paint and read the comment. Have you ever painted an well natural model? I have, and I'm a huge fan. So painting live is fantastic, but because you don't get a lot of time, the lights always changing, um, or the models moving, there's a lot of importance to uh, do things quite fast. Um, really put something down on the canvas in a hurry, um, but there's something about connecting with someone in person there's something um romantic about it not in a uh well romantic in all the ways it's it's sort of cool um not in all the ways romantic in the wholesome platonic fun ways um yeah live painting's really cool it's i think that's where the hammer really meets the anvil but I don't do it that often. I actually am more, I do more images like this one because, uh, have you, ooh, good picture. Sorry, my English not gog. Oh, sorry, Rosie, you're doing pretty good though. It's pretty close. Um, so, this one here, we're working off an image, but this is sort of a tough one. You couldn't really, do this one live because the ball will move by now. Taking a big risk. We are. We are indeed. This is a risky business, but we're doing it. We're out here doing it. Whose brand saying is that? It's like Bunnings or Mighty 10. Indonesia. Welcome from Indonesia. This isn't the best brush for it, but we'll keep persevering. Make me dinner. I need to have some breakfast actually. Slipped in to say hi. Well, welcome. Good to have you here. Um, and good luck for the rest of your day. All the best. What got you into the style of painting? Um, jeepers. I think it's it's more my natural style. So I went in all sorts of directions, but eventually. Eventually I fell back on this. This is where I want to be. James Evans, I couldn't speak for you loud and clear. I don't get that one. <laughs> That's all right. Thanks, Johnny. You're the best. When were you first interested in painting? Um, from the moment I could uh, use my hands, really. 
So, very young. Very young. My mother always said things like art supplies. Always, oh, oh, almost lost it. Um, art supplies out for us when we were younger. Thanks, Blooms. Um, and that was good for us. Us boys, but I was the one who sort of had three brothers who naturally liked painting the most. Um, the other brothers, my other two beloved brothers, are very, very good at maths, physics, tech, coding, statistics, all those fun things. What time is it for me? Pineapple says what? It is 9am. So this is the time when a lot of people are about to head off to work. Goodbye. We'll continue to paint for another hour or two. I reckon. Yeah, Dakota. So uh, now that we're using a smaller brush, we're able to squint a little bit and really try and see close so I know what I'm doing. Um, when it's bigger, I can stand right back and just do big waving strokes, but uh, now that we're getting down to some more finicky detail, and I like to keep my detail fun, guys. Like. Uh, just because it gets small doesn't mean you have to get, I'll bring this thing right close to you, doesn't mean you have to get super exact with your strokes. You can get them messy and just add it in there. You're just going for a little bit of color where it belongs. And uh, some fun, yeah, that was another one of the uh, artists in the painting studio here. But he's through in the other room. So don't worry, I'm not being obnoxious by talking here. So it's all. Goody. We've got the whole space to ourselves, which is fun. Oh, that goes there. There. Ba bum ba bum 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 ba bum ba bum 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 bum. You got the whole world in your hand. Got the whole world in your hand. Bunk, 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 bunk. Sorry guys, just making up songs of this paint. Just doing the thing. Um, also guys, if you're enjoying the stream and watching me sit here and slowly put this picture together, then I would always really appreciate it if you shared it. Um, because maybe more people want to see it. You never know. So, up to you. Otherwise, just keep hanging out with me as I keep painting. Either way, all good. But the idea here is just to make as many people as happy as possible on their Tuesdays and maybe get some art done at the same time. So, if you're on board with that, then I'm on board with you. MRTN, you're the best. Appreciate you. Um, Billy Eilish, six year, is online for people that are interested. Who's who's six year? Six year? Billy Eilish? I know who Billy Eilish is. She sings that song, Bad Guy. I'm a bad guy. I think that's exactly how it goes.
Thanks, Kate. Appreciate you. Um, I got a really, really meaningful comment the other day on TikTok, um, which made me go, yeah, that's sort of why we're here. That's really special. Um, a lady mentioned that the videos and stuff were helping her get over her PTSD and depression. So I thought that's, that's just made my week. Um, yeah, so that's one of the things when I wake up in the morning and think, oh, I don't really feel like painting today. I think, well, actually that's cool, but it's not actually just for you. You've got to get up there and paint because you're making someone else's day a little better. So go do your thing. You know, sometimes you have to have those conversations with yourself. Um, I wish my man painted like you do. Your man is fantastic in a whole bunch of ways and he'll have his own special talents and abilities and good for him. And yeah, he may not paint like this, but how he paints is still cool, special in its own way. Um, did I like to do that? Did I do it take an art major? I did, I did. And it was fun. Um, would I do it again? Um, go to university, but do you need to study art? Uh, I think I learned most about art, not actually doing art, but with the friends that I made along the way, if that makes sense form of color therapy. Yeah, I suppose it is. I suppose it is. Got the whole world in my hand. I got the whole world in my hand. Ba -ba 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 -bum -bum. You speak English, but do you think English? I do think in English. Um, be weird if I didn't. Actually, I reckon. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate you. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Boom, 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 boom. Adding on just a little bit of the dark paint in here. And in here. And in here. So we're putting a lot more time into the, uh, top today and like I say after this layer we're gonna be done so let's see where that takes us I'm really interested to hear I'm really interested to hear if you guy loves the painting or not um, what do I smell like coffee Paint fumes. Um, yeah, nothing that exciting. Uh, what is year? What is year meant for my question? What is year meant for my question? What that year meant? For, no, it's not English. I can't help you. Sorry. Um, you know what chur chur means? Yeah, it means like all oh, good. Like yeah, chur chur. Um, Anti-fragile, inspire you. I need to know the definition of it, but uh, I don't think one singular word could inspire me, but uh, if it can inspire someone, that's really cool. Good for them. I asked you, yeah, well, no, I'm not sorry. I am straight. Um, sorry for missing your question. It was such a wholesome artistic question. I don't know why I missed it. Can you do my artwork? Um, you should do your own artwork because you can make some really special things and make 
some magical artwork in your own style. Live that dream, and I'll be so proud of you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Kate. I know, I, I couldn't read it. I tried so hard. It was like a little bit everywhere. Um, but like, it doesn't mean I don't want to answer it though. So I want you to ask. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend, I swear. I just couldn't read. It's more, it, honestly, it's probably more on me than it's on you. Um, where do you get your inspiration for your paintings from? Uh, inspiration for paintings? Um, I see paintings, I like the look of them, I go, right, I could turn that into paint, and I go for it. Uh, so probably spontaneous, spontaneous excitement gets inspiration of paintings, and then the actual creation of them is perpetuated with a flow state most of the time. Yeah. A lot of the time you're making a painting and you can dislike it, dislike it, dislike it, and then you can just hit a part where you're like, ooh, I love it, it's right there, fantastic. Oil, we're doing oils at the moment. This is oils on this tray, that's acrylics on that tray, this is a mixture on this canvas, and yeah, that's where we're at. Um, what if you challenge yourself to paint inverse colours? Inverse colours. Um, you could do that. That's an option. That is an option that you have. Boom, 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 boom. Um, I typically prefer doing uh, I don't like those hard cut rules like inverse the colours and things. For me, I sort of prefer doing uh, just the beat of my own drum. Really? Can you? Uh, we are painting with the tip of the brush. That's what. That's the way we always paint. Um. You know, paint this on your wall. That's pretty exciting. I'm excited for you. It'll be fun. Do you always paint in silence, says Jason? Um, not all the time. I like music. But uh, am I allowed to play music is the question. Copyright and whatnot. I'm allowed to play music. I probably should play music. What do you mean? I don't know. That's for someone else, sorry. Buddy in your conversation. AJ, you're the best. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. From start to finish, how long does it take your typical painting to complete? Five to 15 hours. It really depends on the piece. So this one here is getting up around five hours at the moment. Um, probably seven hours actually, but uh, it's getting very, very close to where I'd say it's gonna be finished. Like I was saying, guys, I want to keep that wildness in the paint. So if I add too much paint to it, or we'll get too picky on the paint, I may lose that wildness that I'm trying to get. And we don't want that. We want to keep that. Sorry if I misses anyone's comments. Uh, measure, keep your inner thoughts to yourself, and never get inside, let it flow. Um, sounds like a rule. Uh, it's good to have rules, but... Uh, same time, it's good to do your own thing, so. Do you like watercolors as well? Ooh. I like that people do watercolors. Do I like watercolors? Not really. Um, the too, 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 too for me. I like thick paint. I like paint that goes down with texture. Um, so I think that texture and the 3D-ness of it captures movement. Um, and watercolor is more 2D. Now it's great in its own way, but it's not for me. How long 
do you take on a regular painting? Ooh, depends. I've got some paintings that actually took like 30 minutes, but this one here is going to be like a, uh, this one here is going to be a seven hour job, I reckon. It just takes a while to build up those layers, you know? There's a lot of paint, there's a lot of styles, it just slowly comes out. That's looking pretty good there with that tray. Put that down there. Get back this tray. Grab the pale brush. Grab some more of this. And we'll just keep on, keep on adding this one. To uh, that's wild. You should keep your ears attached though, you need those, they're, they're very useful. Um, you can hear lots of things. You can, yeah. Yeah. From one artist to another, I recommend keeping ears. Another white shirt, yes indeed. Do you ever done a painting from your own sketches. Um, have I ever done a sketch and then turned it into paint? No, I have not. I suppose you could though. That's an option that I have. But no, I've never done it. Getting really close now, guys. This is taking some good twists and turns in all the right ways. There we go. Sorry if I got silent for a bit, guys. I'm just trying to concentrate as I add this paint on here. There we go. All right, taking a step back, having a look see. Where are we? We need some more time in the sky and the land. And we're gonna do that with exactly the paint on this tray right now. Lots more red. A little bit more gesso, and we are away. How do you know which colors to choose when painting abstract? That's part of the fun. Um, you've got all the power you need. So however you want to do it, the option is yours. Do so you want red, green, blue, violet, crimson, turquoise, yellow? Will's your oyster. Um, the Monet style. I do love Monet. Um, yeah, I'm painting like Monet, we're off to a good start, that's where we want to be. Uh, oh, sorry, I just flicking my neck there. Keep doing the sky for a little longer. Get that. Whoop, that is far. Far too red. See how you avoid the questions. I'm not trying to avoid any questions, I'm sorry guys. I'm trying to get to all of them. Just painting. Definitely uh, I prioritize the ones that are artistic because if you're doing art, I would love to support you. So that's positive. What got you into painting? I love painting. Always love painting. 
but uh, I like how it makes other people feel, makes me feel. The craft that, uh, if you've got a craft that actually makes other people feel great at the same time, then that's something really special. So, that's where we're at. Johnny, thank you so much. Appreciate the fire. Eight guards protecting Debloons. It's a cool name. Um, I'm glad you're laughing nonstop. Having a good time. There we go. I'm an artist, just different canvas. I wish I could draw and paint. Yeah, you are. You are indeed. Um, well, I wish I could do joinery and sing and dance. You'd be like, well, go do it. Well, oh, then the same goes for you if you like painting and drawing. Because if you love it, you'll find a way to do it. Was Titanic being too dramatic? It's a question from left field. Was Titanic being too dramatic? Um, I don't know. It wasn't there. Could have been that dramatic. Probably was. Ship sunk, you know, that was a big deal. Um, no, I do not sing. I do not sing. Got the whole world in my hand. Do you do live paintings for weddings? I've never done that. I've never done that. Um, probably not though, because a lot of the time with my painting style, it heads sideways. You know, it's, I wouldn't want to do the painting for the wedding and for it to be a day where the painting didn't come together. It's too, too high risk for the wedding. If I go out and do it at a sunset, or um, do a drawing of someone, or whatever it might be, it's okay that I actually go, okay, we've missed it this time, let's come back tomorrow. Can't do that with a wedding. Can you miss it at a wedding? Then it's a real shame. I don't think anyone's out there asking for abstract pictures of their wedding. If they were, here I am. But, uh, that's quite niche. You don't sing, but you can dance. Um, I try to sing in the shower by myself and then dancing, I, um, Yeah, I can, do, I can try and dance. Dun, 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 dun. Um, dancing, everyone can dance. It just depends if someone else wants to watch it or not. Sorry guys, almost there was a little bit of detailing. Here we go. Yes, here you are, here I am. What idea, sorry. Do watch Bob Ross. You watch Bob Ross, that's good, good for you. Um, what, have you ever been close to being finished and ruined the painting by the decision you made? Yes, all the time, all the time. Um, a painting is in a constant state of flux, right up until completion, and even then, you might just go back and do it a little later and ruin it. So, these are the things. These are the things. Wait,
Oh. Okay, where are we sitting with this one at the moment? It's feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good about the spot that we're at. <laughs> so just give me a moment guys, so take a step back and have a look at it from a distance, see how it feels, how it looks and feels. Um, feels pretty good guys. Are we done though? That's the question. I think we're done with this one. I think we're done. So, I'll turn it front on for you guys. So you can have a look. Um, so, I'll put a coat over the top to actually uh, stain it, but you'll notice that there's a lot of areas where you could spot more detail, do more things, and I might actually come back to it yet, but um, the what you want to find is that actually the paint's really messy, it tries to be paint. Um, there's, there's no overall plan to gain shape on it, and because of that, the bull is actually slightly distorted, but that's part of the expressiveness that you get in there. Um, that lack of matching of the proportions, you'll notice it most in these little bars going across, they'll seem more disjointed um, and there's a lot of texture in the landscape and sky so overall a really fun painting um, it's not trying to don't look into it and try and get a sermon out of it it's uh, just trying to have some fun so if the idea is a person who wants it they just want a high energy picture of this guy and uh, they've got it so be happy big happy um, is that blood on the floor? No. Um, how much would that go for? So this one here, it's for a friend. So I've done a really good job of keeping costs down. So it's on the board. It's, um, yeah, I'm hardly going to charge for my time on that one. That's more just a project of passion. So it's as close to zero as I can get it because I just want them to have it, old friend. No, in the painting, my love. In the oh no, 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 no. It's just we've added red all over the picture. His face is mainly red. Um, we're just trying to capture the vigor of the painting. Is what we're up to. Um, what's the next painting? That is a good, good question. So let's put this one down somewhere where it can start to dry. Then, here we have it, the old canvas. So, I had this one stretched a few days ago. This is, let me put this off it. Wonderful canvas, it's 34 by 46. perfect paint shop too perfect go do it now i'm gonna bring you around here guys there we go um so first things first um new canvas a couple of ways to do canvases if you're just starting out painting you can go buy a cheap canvas from any store or if you don't have store 
you can get one of these. If you've heard me yarn about these, this is hardboard. Standard hardboard, it's called Masonite. You can paint straight onto it. It won't get all, um, it won't blow up and things like MDF sometimes does. This is just really, really good. So if you're on a budget, the stuff here from your local DIY store is the banger. That bull rider painting will be worth 10K surely. No, it will not be because I will not charge the man that much money. Um, it is very much so um, a painting of passion for the guy. Um, we used to uh, do a lot of riding together, um, horses and things like that, and he loves that I'm painting now. So he wanted a piece of artwork, and I was just that stoked that he wanted a piece that I would have done it for free. So basically, he's, he demands to pay, so I'm only going to pay him as much as he'll tolerate paying. Um, yeah, so I want to keep it as low as possible. Um, so excited to see a painting from the beginning. Thank you. Yes, so um, I have to, this won't be done completely today though, just FYI, um, because I need to pop out to print the picture off. So right now, I'll show you how to get the canvas all primed up and ready. Um, most expensive work? Mm, hmm. My memory fades, but it's not fair to compare because uh, you got small pieces, you got big pieces, you got murals, you've got all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah. Sorry, uh, but this one here is a board. This board is the cheapest way to do it. If you don't have canvases, this is fine. Old school painters would use these. There's nothing wrong with using these. Um, now, I've got a canvas, and the reason I've got a canvas is because if you use a board, if you use a board, it's best to frame the board. If you're using canvas, if you paint around the sides, you don't have to frame the canvas. So in terms of if you're actually selling the work, um, a great way to keep the cost down is by using a canvas. But if it's really hit and miss, like with my art, sometimes it goes right, sometimes it doesn't, um, I find that a board is handy. Because when you really throw a punch that you like, you can uh, frame it. But with the canvas, you've sort of committed cost to the canvas. So sorry, big long yarn there. Um, this canvas here is, get the thicker ones. I like the thick, a thick canvas is a good canvas. If it's too thin, it'll warp a little bit. Go for a thick one. Um, with this canvas here, you can tell a good canvas if it sounds like a drum. So I'll flick this one. See how it sounds as if it's a, as if I'm tapping in front of a drum. It wants to be tight like that. If you flick it and your figure goes into the canvas or it uh, sounds loose, this is this is not the canvas you want. You want a canvas that's tight from the start. I do stretch my own canvases uh, when I'm uh, blah blah blah. This one, this one here was stretched by someone else, but then after it's finished, if it was getting rolled, I could pop the canvas off here and then re-stretch onto it. So that works too, but it depends what sizes you're doing. Chops and changes, cool. All right, this one here, like I was saying, sounds like a drum, that's perfect. A lot of these canvases come pre-coated in gesso. Now that gesso that goes on them sometimes is sprayed, and when it's sprayed, you don't get the texture of brush strokes on it. And so you might start painting an unprimed canvas, and you'll find that actually the brush strokes get all niggly on the texture of the canvas. So, we're going to gesso our own canvas. Nice little fact to know, you're welcome. I hope these tips are helping. So, gesso, we're going to use this stuff. What's this? The cheapest gesso on the market. Why? Because this canvas here is dry. It's been sprayed with gesso, but did it really do much? Probably not. So, we're going to grab the cheapest gesso available, and we're going to put the first coat of gesso on, just like this. Now, if you put it on thin enough, you can just start painting straight away. So, that's fun. And let's see if we can actually, let's get a little plate here. I can see this going wrong. Now, one thing you want to do with this is don't get too excited about making sure the paint goes on exactly the way you want it. 
don't get excited about that. There's no need. This is the fun stage. This is the stage where you can do it however you like. But you can put down early texture. And what we'll do, just so you can see what's going on, because that's fun, is I'm going to grab some paint. Because there's nothing wrong with this. There Here we go. Look at that. Now there's colour in the gesso. So it's much easier to tell where I've been and where I haven't been. And for the early coats too, don't be afraid to use your paintbrush, almost like a pencil, and just scribbling. That's fine. Um, do I sell my art? I do. You can find it on my website if you click on the link in my bio. Um, and we can go from there. Okay, this is going well. Um, for the early layers, try not to push on the canvas too hard though, because too much pressure on the canvas can result in stretching it. And although we like stretching canvases, we don't want to stretch this canvas too fast. So, um, I also don't want to put globs of paint on too big. I need this to dry sooner rather than later. Let me just come around here and do the side. There we go. Now, one fun thing to do as well, guys, is you don't have to paint. A lot of the time you can leave your sides, and people think, don't paint the sides. It's annoying. I just want to do the front. What if you just did these two sides, and the top in black and the bottom in black? Because no one really looks at the top or bottom of a piece, but people do see the sides on different angles. And if you've gone for a thick canvas, then uh, doing the sides can be a really nice touch. So, there you go. That's what I reckon. Thick, guys. First coat goes on thick. There we go. Gesso, this one's almost out, but we'll just keep going with it. <coughs> Sorry if I'm missing some uh, comments too, guys. Let's try to get this coat down. Um, sorry, guys. Just using a bit of gravity here. This one's basically out. There we go. Um, let me see. Let me see, let me see. I'm just gonna grab a bunch of this acrylic here, guys. This leftover tray is gonna become part of my base coat for this painting. Just gonna scoop it all out of here. Like this, like this. Um, there's nothing wrong with using paint in with your gesso. So you see, got a bunch of color there. And we've got a troll out there needing a mute, do we? Who's been a troll needing a mute? Did I miss some comments? I'm sorry, guys. Um, Keep a closer eye out. Yes. Painting has no rules, you go, friend. Yeah. Perfect. That is the plan. That is the plan. So, there's a bit of paint in this gesso. Right now, the biggest purpose it's serving is it's showing you where I've been, where I haven't been. The reason we put a coat of paint on it, even if the artist's canvas say it's got a coat of gesso on it, usually that coat is a spray coat. And that's just not good enough. We need a thick coat. 
Let's get the right way down the side. And as I was saying before, guys, I find doing all four sides of the frame to be a bit annoying and that you end up getting distracted from the main picture. I don't want that. So, 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 I will just do the front and the two sides. Maximum bang for buck. Do you like painting in pesto? I do, I really do. But in pesto in an abstract, sort of expressive sort of a way. Um, I believe, sorry to get deep on you, but I believe that the future of painting involves texture, involves a 3D effect. And the reason it involved that is because, is because, 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 uh, yeah, no wash. So if I put this paint straight on it, after this, and then we'll do another load with a slightly darker color, and then it will be good to go. Be good to go. Tyler, thank you for the balloons. Um, all we're doing right now is because there will be dust on the canvas, there will be a dryness to it, and there will be difference in texture. I don't want to paint on canvas texture. I want to paint on paint texture. If you're doing these early layers with cheap brushes too, Make sure that you watch out for brush, uh, sorry, bristles coming off on it. I hate bristles getting stuck on the work early. It's annoying. Thank you so much. I would be so happy if I could do this all day. You could. You could. This could be you. I could be you. You could be me. You could live vicariously through me, or I could live vicariously through you. Um, so, there we go. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Like I was saying, we're gonna go the whole way around here, guys. Whole way around the canvas. Here we go but we're not going to do the top and the bottom. And honestly, even if we did try, it's covered most of the time by the actual easel holding it. So just do those sides. There we go. Really good job of the sides and leave the top and bottom. We can come back at the very end and do it with a very classy black once the rest of the canvas is finished. Don't leave patches too. If you're dry brushing or as you're adding paint, you may find these little patches that get left behind. This is the layer where you get those patches. This is the layer that the entire thing gets paint on it. No top, no bottom, interesting technique. C, C, C. Because otherwise you're always thinking, am I gonna do the edges or am I gonna frame it? And blah, 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 blah. How about, don't panic about it. How about just do the sides that they can see? Because actually with a thick canvas, on the side angle, there's a lot to see and you can actually appreciate it uh, much more. Setting a background. So, background uh, undercoat. So I want to put my first brush strokes onto brush strokes. I like to put paint on paint. I don't like to start a canvas and then try and paint straight onto white or straight onto canvas. I want to get that mix up, so. I, who guessed it first? <laughs> um, you ever crush your own pigments? Uh, no. I, oh, look, I've done a little bit, but um, no, I typically buy my paint. Um, wait for a sale to come on, buy good quality paint, and then uh, use that. And, I mean, I, I guess you could, but uh, I typically like going to the store and seeing all the colors already made, and I can just keep selecting different ones, one after the other. This color, that color. Bang, 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 bang. Look, this is what I was talking about, these little bristles. They cannot stay. They must come off. Away with you, little bristle. We won't play that game. There we go. Be 
sitting all alone, all alone. Don't worry about what the brush strokes look like, we're just building up a base coat. Um, hi, welcome hi, it's good to have you back. Absolutely no bristles. Yeah, so, you can, look, again, with art, do whatever you want, but uh, for me, I like my base coat not to have bristles in it, preferably. But if you want to have bristles in your base coat, that's actually like, there's nothing wrong with that. Do your thing. Um, so that's wholesome. But after it's corner done here, we'll have a full coat on the canvas, which will be fantastic. And like I say, don't try and reach up over the top, or go down the bottom. You'll end up spending half your time down there and no one's ever gonna care. Whereas that time and effort could go towards the front of the canvas for an overall better result and around the sides. But not the top and bottom. You never know. Maybe the person who buys the artwork is going to hang it so high that no one's going to see the top of any of that. No one's going to see the top anyway. So, um, one thing I like to do with the top and bottom is add some thick texture into it as well. So it's not just a black matte coat, it's actually quite thick, quite bold, but uh, only noticed when you're on that weird angle looking at it. All right, guys, we're almost there. Now, to stop there from being any uh, big stroke affecting the work, I'm gonna spread all these strokes out. How am I doing that? A whole bunch of little strokes. Are we trying to move paint anywhere or make it look a certain way? All we're dealing in right now is texture. It's all we're working in. Every time I see a big stroke, I'm putting little strokes through it. Because that means I come back and do that, do some more detail, those big strokes aren't going to affect it with its giant warping texture. And every time I feel like there's not enough paint on the canvas, I won't let it stay thirsty. I'm going to add some more wet paint to it. There we go. Just like that. Like this area here, that's too thin. That's too dry. There we go. It's a phoenix. It's not a phoenix, but it could be a phoenix. We could make it into a phoenix. This could be the first phoenix I make. Here we go. And there we go. Perfect. When you're starting a new canvas too, it is an inspiring time. And it is a great time to play ba -da -ba -ba -ba. music. Not McDonald's theme songs. Music. Do you already have an idea for a subject? I do, but I need to print the image off. So, after I've primed this canvas, I'm gonna go do that, and then I'll come back. So if I disappear on you, I wasn't trying to hide the fun part from you. I wanted to have the fun part, but, but I need the image, because even in the early stages, never shoot from the hip. Always have a lot of intention about where you're putting paint, or don't, um, that's just my style. But uh, this is a really fun one. So this is actually a work for a man who was watching the live, who said, I would love a self-portrait, a portrait of myself, so not of me, of him, and so, wait, will this be like modern art that I don't look like anything? No, it's going to be a really fun, bright, colourful image up close of a gentleman's face, um, and it's going to look really cool. I'm planning on using the whole color palette, exploding colors everywhere, building up over many layers so that actually you can see a real depth to it. And most of all, most of all, it wants to be fun. If people look at it and they go, that's a fun piece of art, that's where we want to go with this. That's where we want to go. It's Sauron from Lord of the Rings. Is it? Is it me or the painting? I sort of see Sauron colors ish. Ish. Here we go. And like, look, if you never took the painting further than this and just slashed paint all over the surface and called it a day, good for you. Good for you. Um, I think that's this whole paint tray run out pretty much. Yes, it is. So that's out. Again, guys, we're just looking for those patches. 
we didn't put down quite enough gesso because I will be painting on paint strokes. Paint on paint, not paint on canvas. So I'm trying to remove all the canvas texture. That's what I want to get rid of. I think I feel like when you go up close to a work and you see canvas texture, it ruins the uh, magic of a painting. I like to go up to a painting and just see paint. So your first coat wants to go on really thick. It wants to hide that canvas. I love the canvas. I love it. But I need it in the background. I don't want it on my texture in the foreground. That's where I'm at. Here we are, do, 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 do. Like I say, don't worry about where they, uh, better not look like Jason Pollock. <laughs> no, it won't. Um, look, Jason Pollock stuff's cool, don't get me wrong. It's fun, but uh, no, we're gonna go for a bit more realism. So Jason goes full on paint. So he just wants to express what the paint looks like, forgetting all realism that could be um, shown. And then you've got people like, you know, Salvador Dali, not Salvador Dali, uh, let's say Leonardo da Vinci, who tries to paint as real as possible most of the time. Um, two ends of the spectrum, say. Not the perfect examples, but examples. So with those examples, um, we want to go right down the middle of that. This doesn't want to look perfectly real, and it also doesn't want to be wild paint. It wants to be those two concepts fighting for a 50% share of the same company. That's what we're after. And so if you look at it and go, it's not really a perfect picture, but it's also not abstract either. That's where I wanna be. It wants to be a good concoction of both. But right now, if you get the colors, get the shapes you see, I mean, unless it's fun, do whatever you like, but uh, we're just covering this canvas and making sure that what we can see, texture-wise, is just paint. Here we go. If you put it on at just the right thickness, just get rid of those bigger drops. Here we go. Perfect. If you put it on at just the right thickness, what you'll find is the canvas will uh, um, dry very fast. So, next stage for me now, guys, is I need to run out print off the image, come on back, put it up, and I'm gonna attack this canvas, good and proper. So, literally by the end of today, I'm hoping that you'll actually, you'll definitely be able to see the face 100%, but um, yeah, we'll get a fun amount of distance through it, and then I've got a few other little ones to start, which hopefully, if the sun clears up, we'll do it outside. No stay, oh my god, what? Um, I need to see. Can I stay, guys? That's the question. Do I have an image to go on with? This has gone on for way too long, and I'm tired of moving on. This has gone on for way too long. There we go. I suppose we can, guys. So this one needs a bit of time to dry. We'll let that one sit where it is. This could be fun. I'll show you how to prime a board. <laughs> Where are you going? Why are you leaving? Um, because, 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 because. Let me just shake this one here. There we go. Hold that one down there a little bit. Yeah, now we're talking. Now how we're talking. And how long is this board? Hard to tell. There we go. Go to there. That's where we want to be. That's a well framed shot. Right. This is our shot. Not for this canvas, but for the next gun. Down there. And what I'm going to do. Is prep the board. So boards are really fun. And the reason they're fun is they take so much less prep than a canvas. Um, with a board, it really is the wild west. You can do it however you like. 
with the end result, see, let me just take this down, uh, being that if you like it, you just go get it framed and the board's done. This one's going to need time to dry. I'll just take this one down. So you'll see here, sides painted, top left. Easy, easy peasy. Right, through here you come, mate. Down there we go. Right, that can sit there and dry slowly. You'll see behind here, guys, is a big canvas. We're not changing that for today. Oh, right, here we go. What paint do we use? Anything, uh, depends. If it's good enough quality, um, then what do you want? Paint Gandalf, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it needs time to dry, and then we can come back and start putting the face on it. Um, there'll be no guidelines to that one. So thanks, Kayla. Um, no guidelines to that one. It'll literally be paint the whole way through, and there won't be any moment where we actually mark out the face to try and make sure the portions are correct. Um, yeah, correct portions, computers can nail those. As a human, you attempt to do correct portions, what's gonna happen? You're gonna get beaten by the computer every time. So I like to own the fact that we get portions a little bit off and then steer into it a little bit. And when you focus on chins and hairlines and ears and eyes and brows and eyelashes and lips in certain ways and exaggerate them or shrink them or move them, that's part of creating art as a homo sapien and you should enjoy it for that. Um, oh, thanks Pauline, you're the best. <laughs> um, so, uh, hello from Canada, it is 10 o'clock here. So anyway, uh, this is now our board. So this is gonna be a fun, fast painting. So if you're at home, this is the way I'd suggest to paint if you don't, if you don't wanna spend money on art, but you wanna do art. So um, yeah, that one's gonna be an expensive work. That's a, that's a big dog. Uh, this is going to be a fun one, um, and with a fun one, board's a place to go because, like I say, low buying. So this is a fifteen dollar board from a DIY store. This is a uh, yeah, I think I said it hardboard. Some places call it masonite. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Um, uh, yeah, this is uh, masonite hardboard. One side is textured. Um, you can use a textured side. Nothing stopping you. I like to use the flat side. So this side's very shiny. Um, one good thing about hardboard, especially if you get this darker one, is that it's literally just made with wood chips and water. Why is that important? It means it's gonna last forever. A lot of MDF wood comes with additives in it, which will discolor or change over time. So if you ever go to a, become a really famous artist or you're, you, want, you want your work to last forever in the family, um, you'll find that MDF or other woods with additives like chemicals in them might let you down. But hardboard, um, since it's just wood, is, even though it's crushed up wood, is good for you, so it'll last. You'll find a lot of old works on hardboard. Um, sometimes I peel the sticker off, and sometimes I leave it on. It's really up to you, doesn't matter. So there we go, let's get this and put it up here. This time we're working and very much portrait. We'll lift that one up there a little bit. And I just lay it against it. There we go. Um, if you don't have an easel, it is not the end of the world. Easels are great if you've got them because you can angle work to where you want it to go. There's nothing where that wrong with working on a flat surface. So if you lay it on a desk, that works really well too. But I find, because I've got a long neck and a long torso, bending over a desk is quite hard for me. So I like to have an easel standing up like this. Um, the simplest thing you can do is get like a chair or just a stand of some sort, stand it on it and lean it against the wall. Just paint it from there. And as long as you don't get too wild, it'll sit there and it'll all work for you. So that's part of the fun. Right, so same story. Uh, we are doing gesso coat on this one. Now, since it's more fun, we don't even need to use gesso if we don't want to. We can use whatever, cheap paint, or whatever we can find. But we're using gesso because, well A, because it's here, and it's got some body to it. So it goes on 
quite thick. Yeah, yeah. So, don't want to injure myself. Yeah, so the issue I faced with long torso was back problems. So, standing up's the best way for me to do it. If I sit down, I hunch. So, it's best to always be standing for painting for me. Um, that means that you need a good pair of shoes. Um, so, since we're smashing this one out from start to finish, I need to make sure that I spread the paint out because I need it pretty much to dry the moment I put it on. And what I'm hoping this gesso coat does, it's going to grab the dust off the canvas, the board, and it's going to create a paint layer to work on. But you've got to put it on quite fast because we don't want to waste time. Same story, guys. With these funnel works, I like to use a paintbrush, almost like a piece of charcoal or a pencil. So you're really scrubbing with it. You're scrubbing with it. You're washing a pot almost. Um, people get hung up thinking they want to make every brush stroke look like a brush stroke. It can look like a mess. Look at that. That's fine. This is going really well. And plus, the start of a canvas, this is where you can have your fun. This is when you can use a brush the way you want to use it, not the way you think the paint should look or all the rest of it. You can just have some fun. But don't use up all your energy. Um, yeah, if you use it up early, how are your brush strokes going to look nice later? That's the thing. All right, there we go. Here we go. Sorry if I'm missing some comments there too, guys. Uh, no need to paint the edges on this one. So with hardboard, typically, you'll end up, uh, if it is a good picture and you love it and you want to sell it, you'll frame it. So, A, there's no edges, and B, if there was edges, we wouldn't paint them because the end result, if good, will be getting framed. So, we're safe on that front. Ignore edges on hardboard. I mean, you could go over to them, but what would be the point? What would be the point? Um, what I'll do with this one, guys, to have some more fun with you. I'll smash on a coat really hard and fast. It'll be a real mess, it'll be really fun. And then uh, once I'm finished with that, I'll run off, have myself some early breakfast, or some late breakfast, print off that picture for the other canvas, and then come on back later today. I'll take you with me, but it'll be pretty boring. That would be pretty fun though, to take you guys around for a whole day with me. Like this is where I drive to. This is where I have my breakfast. Now I'm in the studio. And now I'm actually painting. <laughs> um, I have no idea New Zealand was 24 hours ahead of me. Painting future, yes I am. Uh, well, painting at the same time, but the sun's in a different place in the sky. There we go. There we go, 3 p.m. there. Wow. Thanks for the weights, Kayla. The sticker. I thought that would work someone up, Larissa. Yes, we're gonna leave it there. Um, I thought about removing it, and then I thought, the paint's went on so thick that actually, I like the fact that it's there. Um, it's not going to bother the end work, and in terms of removing it, this is a board from Mitre 10. It comes with a sticker. The sticker's no in position to me, and therefore the sticker can stay. Um, I could remove it, but I've come to like it. And plus, if anyone wants details on this board, <laughs> they can scrape back some paint, peel off the sticker, and have a look. <laughs> I don't like this if you You'd be like, oh, that's surprisingly unnovel. Um, 
But, uh, yeah. And plus, there'd be a bunch of people who'd be logging on trying to uh, think, oh, Sib's live, he must be painting. They come on there, and uh, <laughs> it's just me making some breakfast. They'd be like, huh, I've finally got some false advertising here. Cool, there we go. So put it on thick, but not too thick. We need it thick enough that it dries, guys. If you look at this, if I take this brush over the work now, you'll know it's at the right stage. If when I brush around, nothing really happens. That's when it's at the right stage. So here, it's too thick. So we'll give it a bit more of a movement out. There we go. Doesn't matter if you can see the board underneath. That's fine. But here in the middle, it's too thick. It can stay, guys, but honestly, if we leave it, it's just going to affect the next coat of paint we put down. That's thin enough now, we'll just dry there. That's all dried, that's all done. Cool. Coolio, coolio. Like I say, no guidelines, we're just putting on paint where we see it. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, the best painters have long torsos, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> um, I've never thought about it, but you know what? Could be the case. It hasn't been proven that it isn't the case. Um, all right, there we go. Ooh, that looks funky. Just pushed a plate onto the old paint tray. That looks pretty fun. I can see the label still. I'm so sorry, Harold. You will be able to because that's the first coat. By the 10th, it'll be gone. If we do 10, might just do one. In fact, I might paint it so the label's always going to be seeable. That'd be funny. Um, finger heart, thank you. Ooh, that's got a bit of paint on my face, hold on. Here we go. Got it. 10 coats, probably not Jason. Um, but if you count that as a coat, then we're golden. But you never know. Honestly, start a work planning on doing one coat, and then if you end up needing two coats, do two coats. If you end up needing three coats, do three coats. You see where I'm going with this? Four coats, do four coats. Um, keep going like that. Now, so I need black. black. Um, people tell you, don't use black. I tell you that in art school. Avoid black at any costs. But I'm a rebel. So I open with black, I end with black, and I use a lot of black. That's fun. Um, I'm just gonna wonder, am I gonna add, yeah. So to make sure the paint doesn't get too thick on the canvas though, because if you add black straight away and spread it out, what's gonna happen? It's gonna go all dark, and then we try and mix other colors on top, it's gonna mix into that. So here's our black, ignore the colors underneath, that's actually just because of the plate. Same brush, doesn't matter that there's white and red on it, we'll live. This is our gloss medium. What's that gonna do? It's gonna make the black, that black more transparent. So I'm gonna get a little bit of the black, mix it in through this, and it's gonna go immediately black. Look at that. Well, immediately black, more like a dark gray. And then any areas that I wanna be intensely black, I can do, but there's my dark gray, and that's gonna dry really fast. That's gonna be fantastic. I'm gonna put the picture on the canvas so I don't need to strain my neck to look all over the place. But on an area that's meant to be white, Ha! <laughs> Cheers, Jason. I'm glad. And silly face thingy, thanks for sharing the live. And user, thanks for sharing the live. You're the best. Yes, black. So black is the best way to go. Here we go. We got that on there. We stick down that part there, so cool. So immediately looking at the picture. Um, and it's actually cool that it's small for you guys because that allows you to see more of what we want to do. We want to do these arms, these are black. Just here for these arms. This jacket is a very, very big dark shape. So there's a big black patch right here in the middle. There's a little bit down here, a tiny bit down here, and there's these trees behind them. Now, the temptation is to go arm, arm, body, trees. Um, and we could do that but probably more accurately, uh, 
It's just one big blob in the middle. Now hold on, let's just make sure the scale of this camera is correct here. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so the picture that we've got in the side of this canvas, I'm going to draw a line across there. I'm going to draw a line across there. I'll tell you what I'm doing in just a second. I'll see the measurement correct. One moment. Perfect. So it's unlikely that your picture, this is my picture, is going to match the size of your canvas. There's two ways you can deal with that. You can either try and, in your own head, map the picture onto the canvas and get the portions correct, or you can size your picture correctly, or you can just cut your canvas. So since it's a board, guess what? We can get the bandsaw and cut it, or we can leave the fun little lens on it. I actually like that. I like it when there's a good bit of artwork, and then it sort of splays into working and nothing. So, have you made a scary slash horror painting? No, I haven't, not really. I prefer to do fun. Um, I think art can be beauty, and I think beauty is more fun when it's in an approachable manner. Um, I think there's better messages. I mean, I love that there's that sort of art out there, and if you love that, good for you. I think the messages that I want to spread are always going to be positive. Um, I should do more landscapes, but one day, one day. Okay, so I've drawn these lines here because I'm not going to go past those lines because that matches the scale of that to this. So, yeah. What I do is I get the pit, 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 picture and I walk away from the piece until the piece is the same size as the board and that allows me to match the sizes of it. And I do that, sketch out the space and you're away. Are you drawing a child on the bottom left too? Uh, yes, the child will be there. So, but the child, like I say, the man's face and the child, if you got this picture and divided it up into squares and told me how many squares of it was actually faces or per people are things, the kid's only like less than 5%. So the time we're gonna spend on the child's face is gonna be negligible. The time we spend on his face, also negligible. The time we spend on the jacket, the jacket's 50% of it, so it's going to be most of the time. Right. So first things first, no guidelines. We're just going to come in here and do it straight away. Here we go. Right up there into the corner. Right, so first lines. Jacket coming down here. Here we go. That's where that's going to come to. Down through here. That's going to come down to here. This is his right arm, but like I say, we're not recognizing this as a right arm. We're just putting it in here. It's a little bit light on the color at the moment, but that's okay because this is going to help us get the overarching form that we're after. Now, this man here has a very long torso. Feels, my friend. So, we're going to try and capture that. And that comes down to here. Little kid's got a little beanie line, like that. I think actually, looking at this. Don't be afraid to loop around too. You don't have to stay in one area. We just gave up on the shirt to come along to the hat. That's wholesome. Coming down here to the face. Don't see a distinction between the background and the face, with the face and the hat. You just get right on in there and paint what you see. We're looking for shades right now. Shades are all we care about. Doesn't matter on the color. We're just up to, here we go. That's where our space was, at the top there. So, now we come down through here. There we go. And that comes down to there. And that comes, that's why our scale is off the bottom here because of that. There we go, that's there. And that curls around there. And that gives plenty of room to old mate down here. We're away. Thanks Jay, the best. Um, we are done. This is all you need to do. Yeah. Um, well, when we're going to do these fast paintings, that is going to be the case because, like I was saying, make sure that you are happy with your first coat because it might be your last. There's some work that you'll do that you'll uh, finish and you'll think that's enough. So put down every brush stroke like it's your last and don't worry if it doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like. That's just not even a relevant fact. Um, one thing we missed there was the trees in the background. 
There we go. Why do we miss those? Because I was busy painting him and not concentrating on the actual shades that were supposed to be seen. So I need to see the shades. There we go. These trees are the most relevant because if I don't see the trees, I'm just going to paint a man who's going to look like a stick figure. And I don't want a stick figure. I want the real energy and expression and subject here. And actually, if I'm being honest, these trees are darker than anything in the foreground. So when I started, they should be my first targets. I'm not beating myself up about it, just acknowledging it. So next time I can do better. There we go. Perfect, that goes down through there. Now, it will we'll start looking like the subject, and we may lose it as we go on a little bit, but that's positive. It'll start by looking like it, and as we slowly lose it, we can bring it back. It doesn't need to be perfect the whole way through. Like I was saying, a journey with a painting is not linear. It is very much up and down. Are we back to the workout life? <laughs> uh, Jamie, that's going to be... Uh, that's not a thing, but uh, I am going for a workout today. It'll be later on. Um, because... I find I'm much more agile mentally for art when I'm healthy, physically. So there's that. Hey there, good, good. So, this is interesting. I've got this little flake in the bottom here, but now that I've started painting, I've realized I actually want that. Even though, if I was doing the correct measurements, I didn't need it. Well, now I'm deciding I'm going to throw the scale off. So I've changed my mind. I want that little bit. Do things need to be in proportion? No, they do not. I can do it my way. That's part of the fun. All right, there we go. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Right, so now. We're going to start acknowledging the darkest pieces, which is down through here, down through down here, across the top here, down through here, some buttons down here. Make sure the paint doesn't go on too thick, or you will pay for it later when you try and complete later coats. There we go. Down through here, that comes down like that. This hand comes down quite far, but it's actually, we can't paint a hand yet, just the part on the inside. There we go. A little bit of darkness there, darkness there, darkness there. Trees. Um, temptation a lot of the time is to paint trees quite fast and just assume that trees are messy, so it's fine. Just the trees are there. Spend as much time on the trees as you do on a face. Last time I tricked that, checked. There's a lot of details and branches. Don't just ignore that. That's naughty. There we go. Perfect, now we're talking. How long have I been painting for? Ooh, long time, since I was a little fella. And it's, uh, yeah. But this has always sort of been my style. I like the rough style. I like paint that can be paint, and be expressive and enjoy itself and not to get caught up in the whole. Um, yeah, I don't like, I don't like playing any outlayers intensely and going stroke to stroke, slowly moving around the picture. I like you to be able to see the fun that I'm having and do like, sort of, sort of can add uh, that, make that present in the work. Because I feel like I'm having fun when I make it, you'll be able to feel the fun and then if you end up with the painting, it'll keep being fun. So that's the, that's the tactic here. So if you look carefully, you'll probably start seeing the formation of the man, but at the same time, remember guys, it doesn't need to look more like the man with every stroke. We can take it in the wrong direction. Wrong direction, another direction. We can get as abstract as we like. Cool thing about this is this painting doesn't have an owner. So we can literally paint it however we like. There's no one telling us they want to commission in a certain way, that there's a certain way to do it. As long as you're having fun, you're doing it exactly right. Because this thing here might go into the garage and never leave it. So why would you put so much pain in yourself and doing it a certain way? If, that's, if that could be the result, do it the way you feel like doing it. 
I really believe that, guys. I'm big on that. If you didn't know. <laughs> um, right, down the legs here. So legs, we're only doing this to add a bit of shade. There we go, there we go. down through here. Little legs are really, really fun. And the reason legs are fun is there's so much texture in things like the khakis that he's wearing. Don't just slap it in where you think it should go. Actually put the real lines in there. Where are the actual crosses and folds in the khakis? It doesn't mean waste your life doing every single one, but don't just make it up. Do exactly what you see. Um, to the scale you see it in. Wouldn't that be special? Um, here we go. So you can see there's really not a whole lot of time going into where I'm putting these strokes, but they are exactly what I see. I'm not adding anything in. That's not what I believe is there. Now, if you were gonna scale this picture out, if you're gonna scale this picture out and actually figure out where everything is, this is so far out of proportion. Arms are in the wrong size, torsos wrong size, legs wrong size, face wrong size, trees, scale, composition, it's all off. That's the charm. A computer can do a better job. Let the computer do the composition correctly. You're a human, have fun being human. Get scale wrong. People like it. I like it, you do you. Um, if I want an exact picture, the photo is the best example of that. I'm painting the photo. I can't make a better photo than the photo. That'd be outrageous. That's the photo's job. My job's to make a beautiful picture on this or a picture that captures beauty. Um, and so you've got to embrace what makes you human, which is the mistakes you can make, the missing scale, and the fun you can have. Looks heavy. Ah, uh, does it? Let's look it on your screen. No, we're in pretty good shape. We're in good shape. Turn around, please. No one behind me. Um, follow the host. Thanks, Tanya. Hello. Right. Right. Let's have a look see here. You know what? That arm there should be black as well. But we didn't do it black. And now I'm going to put a self imposed rule on me and say it's too late. So here we are. Um, this is when it's going to get pretty fun. Am I going to get out the pretty gloss gel or am I going to do. Blues, or are we gonna get browns? What are we gonna do? We're gonna do, we're gonna do blues. Blues, here we go. So, I love this blue. This is cobalt blue hue. This color blue is my favorite blue. Really strong, really punchy. And in fact, when I used to play Halo, if anyone's played Halo, I would make my Master Chief in PvP cobalt blue. I thought that was cool. I still do. Um, Peter, the horse, is here. Ah, oh, all right, good. I'm glad. Now, this is a bit different. You've been seeing me using gloss medium. Gloss medium's great. It thins out the paint. Now, this is heavy gloss gel. This stuff's no mess around gel. The reason why we're using heavy gloss gel is when we add it, it keeps a lot more texture in the work. Ooh, yeah. Now, if you look at that, you can actually see the fork marks that I've left in that. This is this is thick gel. This is the good stuff. Ooh, ooh, just went into my coffee a little bit. Not the actual gel, the uh, head of the fork. Now, g'day Nick, how you doing? So, there's the gel. See how it just sits really proud. It doesn't flatten out like the other gel does. This is, this is good stuff. Um, I love it because when I put paint strokes on, what do they do? They keep all their form. They stay thick, the best. So, heavy gel, gloss medium. How much blue's in this picture? Not much. So that's why we're gonna find a bunch more than there is because that's part of the fun. Here we go, there we go. A lot in there, all the way down here. On the sleeve there, perfect. That arm just got a bit longer than it should have been. Do we care? We talked about this, we do not care. There we go. That's gonna go through there. Perfect. A little bit through there. And then down to here. Where a sort of sleeveish thing is. Try not to see body parts, try not to see arms, legs, chest, all that sort of stuff. 
we're just trying to see colors, uh, sorry, tones and shapes. And we're just adding it where we think it should go. That's the technique here. There we go. That's gonna go right at the top there. Perfect. Perfect. And then the guy's face. Of course, we're not seeing a face. We're just looking for the shapes that we see. So in this case here, his other eye is actually a little bit obscured, but the left-hand side of the face has a lot of shadows on it. And we're just gonna acknowledge that, that. Careful putting paint on the face too, guys. One thing you can do with that, put it on too thick, it's gonna uh, make it really hard to come back later and do more detail. You should paint the Mona Lisa. I could do. I don't know, the last I did a pretty good job of it. Um, uh, there we go. Now the next thing we can do as well is that background is crying out for a bunch of ba -da -ba -ba -ba. light. And um, let's start using this like this. There we go. There we go. Off you come. Off the brush. Unless, do I have a big brush here? I do have a big brush. Hello, there we go. And now I need another plate. I need some more of this gel medium. I'm gonna add that onto here. Look at that, it stays big and thick. That's what we're after. And then I want a bunch of white. Use a lot of white. Here we go, you're not a fan of blue. I'm sorry. Blue's cool. Go easy on blue. Blue's just there doing its thing. So blue, white's the one I've got the biggest packet of because you'll use the most white, especially when you're painting fast. It's like dark turquoise. It is, but it'll come right. Think of the blue as like an extension of black. Um, hey, now. We're gonna steal a bit of this blue off this tray. Oh no, don't do that. Here we go. We're gonna add in this one. And what are we gonna do here? Bunch of white with a thick gel. Lots of thick gel. <sighs> Splashed a bit there. Got it on my arm. We're here now. There we go. Thick gel. And then we're going to go into the sky and we're going to add it on just how it should be. There we go. That goes to there. Look at this. This brush is a hog's hair brush, hog bristle brush. So this brush is very much a uh, tough, coarse brush. Hey, yeah, uh, how you doing? Hey. Good day, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Renee. Oh, okay. good. There we go. So we'll put some sweeping strokes in the sky, but right now, we're just gonna add it in really rough. If I add it in just thin enough, it might dry in time to do another coat. Um, yeah. Thanks guys. Um, don't get into the pattern where you see background and then see foreground. You need to connect it all together. So, the colors where the colors should be. There we go. Now there's a whole beard here, you guys, but we're not going to paint both sides of it the same color because this side doesn't actually have a whole lot of it in there just down through there and that's it and then up here there we go down the sides just painting what we see hello from the Philippines yeah so you want to put the paint on hard and fast Oh, but no. 
the hat goes like that. A little bit over here. Perfect. We get this. Now move it down to the center. I say in the day, guys, don't be afraid to put your painting in the center. That's a very natural place for it to go. Just take your time, sir. No, no. One thing you gotta keep telling yourself, guys, while you're painting, especially if you're doing abstract, you can get caught up in abstract and take too much time in small areas. Keep telling yourself, faster, faster, faster. Capture that figure, capture that energy. Don't let that painting look lethargic on you. You keep going at it. If you want people to see energy and vigor and intensity and fun and emotion in a painting, then you best paint it with that. Don't you go in there and think you're gonna go nice and slowly and capture energy. Come on guys, you need to get in there and really put on paint with vitality. Many speakers, thanks Kayla, you're the best. I appreciate that. Oh, there's my work. There we go. There we go. And that comes down into here. And then we come around here. Perfect. Perfect. Makes sense. Yeah, I think so. Foundation, painting, instructor always said paint only what you see. Yes, yes, he's correct. That's exactly what you should do. Don't just go, I mean, you can make stuff up, but if you want to, if the goal is to capture a subject, the best way to do that is to paint what you see because your eyes have an ability of really seeing some cool stuff. And if you ignore that and paint what you think you see, you can ignore how effective those eyes can be. And you're garnering what's in front of you. Gauging, seeing, whatever. You know what I mean. Here we go. Cool, cool. Now I like to put on strokes onto the canvas as if you aren't coming back for another round. So as if whatever strokes you put down are the ones you'll finish the painting on, that's the way you should put down those paint strokes. Here we go. Okay, so some trees here. That goes to there. That goes to there. The shoulder needs to come up. We'll bring it up here like this. There we go. That's where it wants to be. So see that shoulder's come down too much? We're not going to beat it up. We're just going to actually start the right shoulder where it's supposed to go. I need to start painting. Ray, absolutely. Go to the goal. If you need any tips or hints, reach out. I'm always here as well and happy to help. Right, looking good. Next stage, next stage. We're gonna grab some red. Why red? Because it's not blue. Why not yellow? Because I feel like red. Great process, right? I think so. Um, so red, I'm gonna add a bunch more of that thick, thick gloss gel. This is the stuff. This is the stuff. This is where art, physical art, can match computers with thick texture in person. No purple, not yet. One day. One day purple will exist on this canvas, but that day is not today. Now we've gone for a, here we go, there we are. We've gone for a much more vibrant red, and we're gonna throw it in here, and add it to where we think. Now, after this goes in here, we might even go as far as to swap to a smaller brush. So as we go through this work, since we're in quite a hurry, we're gonna keep swapping to smaller brushes. So we're still on the big brush right now. We might decrease that size. 
Who knows? Here we go. Now we're talking. We want to put it on fast. Don't waste time. There we go. Cool. Like the saying guys, it's going to start looking realistic, but we're going to lose it. It's not a linear process, it's going to change. doing art for Ooh, a while. Um, I've been doing art since I was a young little tacker. And yeah, I love it. And what a privilege to be here today sharing what a craft with you. That's all we can see in the face right now. There we go. The hat's actually conventionally brown, but we're adding red to it. Doesn't bother us one little bit. Um, we're gonna come back with some more blacks though too, guys, eventually. Have you ever tried pottery? A very, very good friend who does great pottery. He's pretty good at it. But, uh, I haven't personally done pottery, no. I'm more of a, I'm a paint guy. I like paint. I like color. I like color, yeah. Pottery is very, pottery is physical. It's, um, you're creating shapes and usually at the expense of color. I know you can get beautiful color in pottery, but it's, uh, it's usually done in a kiln. The colors build themselves slowly over time there. And I like to be the one who puts the color there. And bold. One plus one, two. Damn, I'm good. Same story, guys. This background has some color in it that I haven't acknowledged. Get in there and see the background. Otherwise, the foreground. It's gonna look weird. There we go. Like I was saying, this kid's face is getting very little time in the grand scheme of things. We're not really gonna bother that much. In fact, we know we've had the jackpot when that kid's face is, isn't that legible. Cool. How are we looking? We're in pretty good shape. Green next. But because I don't want to use green, I do want to use green, but not in a conventional way. I want to use yellow, mix it with blue, and then the heavy gel gloss for the day. Um, I typically don't either wash the paintbrush in between. Swapping colors. I just let it roll. What's the reference pick? That's a good question. There's probably some fresh people here, so there you go. That's the reference pick. So it's just a guy, a little kid, big beard, big jacket, and we just have an edit. There we go. Okay. Mixing up our green. Really rough. Not too worried. It's a pretty good green. Could it be better? Probably, but it's good enough. Yeah, we're not gonna get too excited in these areas because these areas need a small brush. So I'm just gonna add it in a little bit. Just a little bit, there we go. Just a little bit, just. Okay, now we're talking. A 
What sort of paint do you use? I use, currently using acrylics, but I am going to use some oils on this. So, once I put down too much acrylic paint, I'm going to add some oils. What's that for? It's going to be because, 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 oils won't mix with the acrylic paints. So, I'll be able to come back for a fresh coat without even waiting for the acrylics to dry because the two won't get along well with each other. So that's wholesome. Very clever method. Are you worried about getting paint on your shirt? No, I'm pretty confident I'll do it fairly well. And if I do, it's just acrylic paint and so I can uh, get it off with a little scrub. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. There we go. Happy days. Cool, cool, cool. What are we doing over here? Just right, and then we go pa. That is enough with the big brush. Moving down to a small brush. Ooh, that one's too small. Medium brush. What was that size? Yeah, so we're going from this size, this messed up big brush, down to this one. So it's about two thirds of the size and we'll keep reducing by two thirds at a time. How long did it take? I don't know guys, how long have we been here for? Pretty fast. Um, Oh, so what I'm doing right now is these brushes, especially hog bristle brushes, uh, are pretty tough at the start. So if you can do it before you use them, loosen them up a bit. Um, uh, pieces you do on here mostly commissions. Uh, this one's just for fun. Uh, but the commission we we're working on this morning, but yes, uh, yeah, mostly commissions. So. I've got a canvas there we're going to start this afternoon for a portrait, but this one's just because I was about to run off and print off some things and people were like, don't go. So I'm like, okay, we'll do this one. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> um, yeah, so smaller brush, we'll capture some smaller detail. Um, are we going to use blacks again? No, let's do tans. Tans and reds. Let's get some tans. Oh, are we going to do that? I want to pop some really saturated colours in there. Blue, purples, purples. Who said purple? Someone said purple before. We're doing purple because of you. Let's see where that takes us. This is a really dark purple. It's a, uh, it's just called purple, but it is dark. So let's see where it takes us. No. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, right, let's have a look see here. Lots of gel gloss. And we're just gonna attack this. Now this paint itself already has a semi-gloss to it, but we're adding more. Because I really want this paint to look wet. It needs to look like the day it was painted, because that's gonna be part of the process of capturing that uh, vigor and energy that I was talking about. There we go. Perfect. How old are you? Uh, 29, 29. <laughs> Talk us through my foot. Are they just a uh, pair of jeans and some pants? That I got out of the wardrobe today when I woke up. Very wholesome combination. What a time to be alive. Now, lots of purples. What we're gonna add here. 
Lots of vehicles. Not a whole spot. Stay with this little bell patch, guys. There we go. Oh, sorry. Any specific brands you're wearing? Barkers, Three Wise Men. Just doing the thing. Um, oh, these are Berlin jeans. And that's about it. Did I? Yes, I did. I did. Lovely. Thanks, Larissa. You're the best. And thanks, Paul. You're all lovely. Like I said, guys, no plan here. We're just adding down paint where we think it should go. Trees. They need a bit of purple, too. Splash that on. Just keep putting it where we think it should go. Here we go. Sorry, guys. Um, are you drawing a monster? <laughs> no, it was a man in a big uh, coat, jacket, and a little kid, and it zoomed in a lot, which is part of the fun, actually. Um, was watching your live this morning, now you're onto a different one. Can I see the other one, please? Ah, yeah, of course, Rachel. Um, it should be down the floor here, hold on. Is it down there? Can you see that? Is it? Wait, no, the angle's off, sorry, guys. There you go. That's the one from this morning. So we're going to leave that now. I think that's pretty much finished-ish, possibly, is where it is. Um, we'll see what becomes of it. And we're going to keep working on this one. See where we get to. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to add on now. Some, some, some. Um, you don't have to keep working off the... There, hold on. What is it, You don't have to keep working off the same palette. I swap a lot. So, I've gone from that palette, now I'm moving on to this one. Because I don't want to get the paints turning into porridge. I want to get that separation. Um, right, this is going to be one of the more, dare I say, boring colours. We're going to use copper and tan. Copper and tan are going to be fundamental in this picture but they don't want to be I'm going to lessen them a little bit so they actually uh, don't take over but because I like the other colours they're all fine um, because there's massive areas of copper and tan the temptation's going to be to do big brush strokes to save that to save me from myself I'm swapping down to a smaller brush so I'll show you, there's our, I'll show you all three of the brushes so far. There's our first brush, that's our big fat one. There's our second brush, and now we're moving down to this brush. So since we're actually moving down to the colors we actually see, 
I want to use a smaller brush to limit my ability to add it. And in that way, I won't lose the colours. That's the plan. That's the plan. Thanks for sharing the live, Rachel. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Now, here we go. Ah, made a mistake. Didn't loosen the brush up. Oh well, we're here now. We're here now. We're doing this now. We'll loosen it up on the job. Are you a lefty? I am a lefty. Cosplays, when did I sub? Oh, oh, I hope no one's anything hateful. Let's all be friends. Do you have a reasonable purpose for your color choice? Uh, it depends what I'm feeling on any given day. So, I just want to use stuff that, I want to use colors that I feel like using. Wherever they may come from is where I get them from. And it's as simple as that. So. Sometimes you'll look at a picture and think that would look really poppin' with this colour or that colour. And so you make that decision. In this case here, I wanted to bring the picture just a little more into context by throwing in these tans, which I do see in this image. To be fun. Um, donut. Thanks, Johnny. Appreciate my donut. Actually, wouldn't mind a donut. We're not far off. Going out for some lunch. Breakfast. Wild ever. Wild ever. Whatever. Wherever. This is the stage here, guys, where I plan to abstract it a little bit. We're going to lose some of that. Uh, vision that you see it's going to turn more into a fun piece lose some of that shape that you've currently got I reckon oh we might we'll see that's the fun thing we don't have to make any choices we can do whatever we want what's my go for breakfast I love porridge porridge all good I'm um, also a big fan of uh, avocado, eggs are great, a lot of ways to do things. Um, blah, 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 blah. What's a lefty? A lefty is a left-handed person and I'm a lefty. Um, so I use my left hand to do things. How about that? Hey guys, be friendly. Let's all be friends. I think we can all get along. Because we're currently in the middle of something quite incredible. The fact that we're all on different parts of the world. And we're all connected here. Having an amazing time together. And, you know, the fact that we can actually connect via little phones in the middle of nowhere and all talk. It's uh, pretty wholesome. So, let's all just show love to each other, to each other. Boom, 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 boom. There we go, like that, and then that goes around there, and that goes there. Fantastic. Tips for art students, yeah. Um, try really, really hard for starters, as you probably already are. Um, do your style and uh, really see where you can take it. Art school is a place for you to find your style and really push it. So take that opportunity to really throw something special out there. Um, don't get caught up in thinking you need to be something other than what you are. Um, a lot of the time, if you don't like what you're doing, or people don't like what you're doing, maybe you just haven't found your people yet, and maybe you won't find them for a while, but your people 
you're artistic people who love what you're doing, whether that's sewing, whether that's fashion, whether that's only using the color blue, whether that's using spray cans, I don't know what you're into. Your people will love that prior to you meeting them, you stuck to your guns and you really fleshed out your style and believed in what you did because that'll help them believe in you too. So, do your art the way you know how to do it. And I hope you go far. And really enjoy art school. When I say go far, I hope you, I hope you love what you do and you share that with as many people as possible. And make everyone happy. That's the goal here. You've got a craft and your craft is making something visual, which is beautiful and brings people pleasure. That's a wholesome venture. So, when you wake up in the morning and try and pursue that, realize you're pursuing something that is very great and the world needs more of. Good for you. Mm. Oh guys, let's all be friendly. Don't be so mean. Um, we'll just control the language, sorry guys. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. And he deserves to be able to speak just like everyone else, but uh, we have nice language, that's all. Yeah, I've sorted it out. Um, but like I say, let's all just love each other. Because we're all great people. And uh, we can all enjoy sharing some time together. That's what I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Justin. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Yeah. I don't know what the question is, guys, but I know the answer is love. That is the solution. who said that that's not my quote that's someone else's but it's a good quote and I appreciate the guy who said it or lady I'm no I'm, yeah again someone said it and they're a very wholesome individual his website's in his bio thanks Justin of a little baby <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry Lincoln. Um, yeah, and thank you Justin. Um, yeah, so the website's in the bio and you can find Instagram there too. And you can reach out via the email on the website, via the contact me page or via um, Instagram DMs, whatever works best for you. All that works. Um, and there's also artwork already up there available and there's the ability to get commissions up there too. I understand if the actual uh, commission thing doesn't work for you only because there's only this few sizes up there and things like that so you're welcome to reach out personally and we can work out something that's the best for you uh, Harold I haven't I don't sell prints at the moment no um, but I am supposed to so in the future I'll make prints available on the page so if you are involved in like one of these lives and you you know maybe you're too far away to get the artwork sent to you or for whatever reason, you can actually um, buy a print um, and get involved in that. I've actually got a guy helping me at the moment for these lives. Um, I can take a picture of it straight afterwards, just on my phone, nothing too intense, but um, take a picture of it and uh, you can, we can put NFTs up and it'll be nothing crazy, but if you're like, oh, that's fun, you can just uh, get a picture, which will be like, hey, I was here for the live. But I wanted to do like, uh, to make it more special, like make the, I need little methods around it, like make the NFTs only available, like for the, like an hour after the live is the only time you can buy one. Um, so if you were here for the live, you can get the NFT, if you missed it, then you know there'll be more, but that one there's special for that period. Um, yeah, and the NFT's obviously a picture of the canvas we were working on, so it could be wholesome, could be lame, could be fun, could be all sorts of things. You never know until you try, but um, yeah. At the moment, 
it's just me doing my thing. Right, more of this color. Here we go. Does anyone here collect or do NFTs? Is that a thing? Physical prints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Physical, physical prints, I mean. Um, and you'll be able to buy those too, eventually. I'm just a little bit slow at the moment. I've been so caught up making the actual pieces, but it's really unfair too for you guys, because if you miss out on getting the piece, then it's sort of over, when you deserve a chance to get like a, uh, a print of it, if you loved it. So, I realise that, I'm aware of that, and I will fix that. So, if you've missed out on a piece, that's already been sold, I'm sorry, but uh, there's more coming, and I'll make sure prints are available. So that'll be wholesome. That reminds me of what Uncle told me when to at least try everything once. There you go. Good advice from the uncle. Okay. Now, it's gonna be wild, guys. We're actually gonna a little swap here now. A little swap to some oil paints. What's the first oil paint we're gonna add? What color's missing, guys? Let's go for orange. Do I have an orange oil paint? Let's find out. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Full brown. Brown? Nah, not brown. Um, orange? Is that orange? That's orange, alright. Um. <laughs> Jeepers, I'm sorry to hear that, David. That's uh, it's not ideal. All right, with oil paints, I like to go really heavy with them, a lot of oil. So I'm just getting all of it out of this tube. Every last bit. There we go, empty. Go down there. Now, now we're onto the oils. Oil's gonna be great because on top of this at the moment, we have acrylics, but guess what? Oils, you'll see them go on the top of the acrylics right now and be completely unaffected by the acrylic presence. They'll literally just go right over the top and say, I am here now, I am oil, and I will take this space. They're more saturated, they've got more power than acrylics, they won't mix with them. So we can come back and add in these bold colors and the current colors on the canvas will be no match. Likewise, if we went in the reverse, we could add on black acrylic on an oil painting or white acrylic and it would sit on top and be largely unaffected by everything else going on on the canvas, which holds them. There we go. Remember, don't add in colors where they're not. We're here to paint what we see, not what we think we see. And we're not too worried about scale being slightly off. We're not gonna get fussy on that. We're just gonna paint what we think we see. lose your paintbrush while you're painting, that would be silly. Here we go, a little bit in here, down here, perfect. How's that looking on your end guys? Paint what you see, not what you think you see. Love that so much, thanks Jay. Screen isn't blurry anymore? <laughs> yeah, perfect Mason, glad to hear it. Looks like Santa Soul smoke. <laughs> Smokey the Bear's hat. Ah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Guys, so it does look like that. Um, I'll just open this window up. Here we go. Let's just let the room breathe a little bit. 
Um, is it a mustard colour? It's actually a saturated orange. So, every time we can see a tone that we can replace with a big saturated colour, I'm not saying do it, but in this case we're doing it. So we're into it. Here we are. Like I was saying guys, every stroke goes on as if it's going to be your last stroke. So, you got to make these strokes count. Here we go. That was good. Don't be afraid to put it on thick. Thick is good. Sorry guys, I'm going to turn around in just a moment. just want to catch up with this. There we go. Perfect. Sorry. Orange is great. Orange is great. I only can prevent the forest fires, Seb. I'll do my best. Um, those are my favourite colours. I'm glad. Yes, this is a New Zealand accent. It is indeed. Now in the North Island of New Zealand, in Tauranga, do you use any mediums mixed in with the oils? Sometimes, but sometimes it makes them smell too much, so... I usually like saturated oil just the way it is, straight from the tube, straight onto the canvas. Very, very rarely mix my oils, so that's strong enough. Acrylics get strong when you mix two colours most of the time. Oils don't, they get weaker. Not weaker, they just change colour. So if you like the colour of the oil straight from the tube, use it, don't stop. Um, would love to paint with me sometime, I'd love to paint with you sometime. Painting's fun. Yellow is your favourite colour, is it? I haven't used it here yet, but maybe. Um, those are your favourite colours? I'm glad. Your live is great to watch. I'm usually bored within five minutes. You are great. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Appreciate you. And what time is it in New Zealand? It's 11 a.m. Quarter. Yes. And I'm glad they're your favourite colours. Oh, just let my neck a little bit. Right. Here we go. Here we go. And bed, there's a bit more colour in there too. We can't just skip that. We want to add these colours. If you see an area too, guys, where we know orange can go, but it wouldn't actually match what is in reality, that's ideal. I want to get orange and blues and greens into this bed. That's where the fun's going to come from. There we go. Now we're talking. Where else can we see some fun? There we go. Right, next colour. Ooh, what's it going to be? It's going to be... Bum, 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 yellow. It's a big, powerful yellow. Oh, hello. Here we go. Lots of yellow. Lots of yellow. Even more yellow. Let's really go with it. Here we go. No holes bad. We've got a stupid amount of yellow. Why do we have a stupid amount of yellow? because I'm stupid, but also because uh, we want the yellow to go on really thick. Don't give whoop, don't pollute. Um, I won't pollute. You have my, you have my word. I promise. I promise it's gonna get recycled. Here is 11 p.m. That's good, Larissa. I'm glad. You've got uh, a big night's sleep in front of you. And that's a good way to be. And um, I'm going to get some white in here too. This is about to get silly. Here we go. Big handful of white. Here we go. Oh, now it's getting bright. Now we're getting bright. All right, let's see where this takes us. We're going to lean into that white even more. Now 
it's all in. And down the front here, there we go. Crash down for a moment, guys. Get down here low. Drop it low. We're gonna get in here and really add these colors. And there we go. There we go, now it's all, and more of it, there we go. Cool, coolio, coolio. Sea yellow is my favorite, I told you, fantastic. Where did I train? Uh, Massey, Wellington, and then I went to Dunedin, and then I went to all over the show, all over the show. It's like a gym question, where'd you train, bro? Where'd you train? It's like, uh, it's like if art had a uh, gym-like thing with the gym, people are like, you natty, bro? You natty? Which means like, you know, on steroids, you natty? It's like artists saying, are you natural, bro? Are you natural? Isn't like, do you have like coffee and cigarettes and other stimulants or are you just natural, bro? Are you natural? Do you paint naturally? Bob Ross natural, bro. I don't know if Bob Ross was a natural, but uh, we're natural here, by the way. Apart from the coffee, we have a lot of coffee. Draw something and blah, 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 blah. Sorry, I can't help you. I can't read the word. But I'm sure it's a good thing to draw. And yes, we are smothering this canvas in yellow. So, to our yellow enthusiasts in the audience, this is for you. You are so welcome. I live for 30 minutes. How do we get this far? I'm sorry, see, I ran off without you. That was wild. Yeah, he'll do nothing while I'm gone, come back. Oh, he's ruined it. He did do something. Um, yeah, so we've swapped two oils, see? So you were gone long enough that I actually swapped the medium all together. And now we're, that's why these colors, if you'll see how they land, they really sit on top of the other ones. They're not trying to mix in. That's the tactic here. Cool, cool, making good ground. Um, your mark making reminds me of Maggie Habling, maybe, maybe. Um, did you enjoy your studio or outside painting the most? Outside painting is the best, by a long shot, so. I should be painting the outside today, to be fair. And we might, yeah, but we'll see if we get on. Um, I might start a new painting outside as well. Just so there's a couple on the go, but right now we're almost to the conclusion here, guys. We're not finished here, but we're gonna add in some blacks and then we're gonna let what we've got dry. And I'm gonna run off and grab some lunch. So, blacks, not blacks, browns. Deep, dark browns. <laughs> Sometimes these comments crack me up. Sometimes you get me. See? Well done. Um, let's leave on this. What's for lunch? Avocado on toast? I don't know yet. I don't know. It's a wild world out there. And uh, we'll see what it has on offer for me. Can't wait to find out. Uh, it's so sunny and beautiful. Colors are just jumping. Well, thanks, Johnny. Um, 
You have been called out, Sue. Here you are, thinking I'm not reading every last comment. I got you. I see you. <laughs> here we go. All right, making good ground here. That goes down through here. There, that's down to there. Now we're talking. Bang. Bang. Making it, here we go. Hi, I mean, I'll cook you for free. I would love that, that would be fantastic, but I'm gonna cook for free. Why am I hiring? This is confusing. Is it a tree above the shoulder of the paint? Yes, it is. See, well spotted. Um, they haven't been quite fleshed out yet, but they're getting there. Okay, Phil gets it. There's a tree down here that I'm dabbing now. There's a tree up here and here and here. All over the show. There we go. guys all right bang there we go we are about to pause there i'll cook and learn win-win for me that's pretty cool an adult violin uh, violin learner it's been fantastic having you here from the start um you're the best now i'll spin this around so you guys can see it i'll just tell you about where we're at so this is Lee man um i'll just move him this way a little bit if i can there we go Come this way, perfect. Yeah, time for lunch for me. Um, here he is here, bunch of bold colors. We can come back later and do our primary colors, our yellows, reds, and blues, to really add in some more contrast, some more fun colors. Um, we're gonna come back with our whites and blacks and our acrylic. They won't mix with the rest of it. And uh, like I was saying, the baby's face is so small, we're giving it very little attention. His face is also small, less attention. The area that gets the most attention, that attention in this work, is right in the center. So we're looking at the jacket, the textures of the jacket, the folds and all that sort of stuff. So uh, most of all, it wants to look fun. So it wants to be a bunch of paint splashed around, sitting in all directions, trying to be paint. And if the image comes out of it too, we're winning. Um, yeah, but it wants to be a dance between those two things. We're doing some areas a lot and some areas a little, because that's fun to see that change. So this leg here, severely under-realized, and this leg here, very intense. It'll also create some movement going forward because certain things will be featuring more. The bed, the bed's gonna be really fun. Lots of color, lots of funk. Um, yeah, hopefully I don't want to enter a position where you start to see a very clear face or very clear limbs and things. I don't want that. I want every stroke to be like you're looking, uh, like you're struggling to figure out what it might be trying to show, but you know it's showing something. That's where we want to be. Me. Um, so, that's gonna take a while to dry, but it'll only take uh, half a day actually to stop being tacky. Uh, sorry, to start being tacky. Once it starts getting tacky, we can paint over the top wet on wet and it won't bother it so much. 
for the underlying paint. The ag products will already be dry. Those oils though, take some time. Perfect. I'm off to have some lunch. Um, I'll tell you what I had tonight when I come back. And I'll print off the images. That other canvas I prepped for you guys today, I'm gonna to put a portrait on that. That's gonna be very similar to how we did this one, except rather than a whole body, it'll be a blown up face, which would be wild, because that's, yeah, a lot goes on in that. And that can be, that's very much painting what you see and not what you think you see. Otherwise that can go great or really wrong. Um, yeah, it's so hard to do that sometimes I even have three canvases side by side doing the same picture because it's just that easy to break it. But uh, thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Ray. See you, Justin. Um, looks like someone you know of, Mark. Maybe. Uh, it's John Ward. Um, and that's great, Angel. I might have that for lunch. All the best. Catch you, guys. Bye.